the scent of potpourri Filled with commit to memory Crossing the felt ropes Watching from home on my TV Looking at all my eyes can see They tell me I view obsessively Hello and welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, where a weekly podcast that reviews one or two new release titles every episode with an occasional free-for-all segment at the end that we call Poopery. You can find more of our work, including my written reviews, full episode show notes, and the complete backlog of our episodes at obsessiveviewer.com. You can also write into the show by emailing me at matt at obsessiveviewer.com. And if you'd like to support us and get access to hundreds of exclusive episodes, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer, where you can get access to content at any of our tier levels, or on or, or, oh my god on a recurring monthly subscription basis or you can buy individual collections a la carte in the patreon shop section uh once again you can sign up at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer uh for a bunch of content i'm your host matt hurt and you can find me on social media including letterboxd at obsessive viewer and later in the show we'll be reviewing fly me to the moon starring scarlett johansson and channing tatum but before that we're going to go over some movie news and then review the new sort of legacy sequel to 1996's twister the aptly named twisters in a non-spoiler and spoiler feature review and joining me tonight is returning guest my friend and ifj colleague who if you feel his film criticism work you can chase it at awakenthedark.com it's the movie ticket wrangler himself welcome back to the show mr brent luthold how's it going it's going great that's good. That was good those are those are good segues good segues the uh the wrangler feel it chase it thank Very you good. yeah oh yeah uh i'm excited to talk about this uh this this movie uh in in this episode so so yeah so i had to i had to i had to to really punch up the the intro uh, unlike last week where i just kind of fumbled it as i do most weeks anyway um so uh brent recently on awaken the dark.com you have reviewed some things do you want to talk about uh well um <laughs> uh the last three things you've reviewed maybe just one of them since we're talking about the other two today yeah we uh yeah we're doing twisters i did twisters yes. yeah most recently um let's see before that did long legs and mm -hmm. then before that yeah did five minute moon so yeah uh yeah long legs i i really enjoyed uh quite a bit i really tried to stay away from like the marketing i know there was uh, just a lot of a lot of it um mm -hmm. i know they they did, like a lot of like kind of clues and and those uh, like kind of a slow drip yeah and uh i appreciate that i think that's great that neon took as much care and time as they did with it uh but i still kind of just wanted to not know <laughs> very totally. much about it i feel like i got enough from just like the trailer i probably did see like once and stuff like mm. that and uh yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, uh, of Oz Perkins. Nice. Um, I think I've I think I've liked pretty much all his movies. I, I wasn't crazy about um, I am the pretty thing that lives in the house. Mm -hmm. There's there's some really creepy shots in that, but overall, it's kind of it's just it didn't really come together. But uh, his other three I've liked, and yeah, I do think Long, Long Legs is his uh, strongest effort. And I know yeah. it's made quite a bit of money, so I'm I'm hoping that'll uh, that'll help him and propel him in the future and um uh, i think he's doing he's doing what the monkey next the monkey right? the, next yeah the stephen king one yeah yep yeah so that's cool i mean he's he's definitely uh yeah. i think a unique voice in the uh kind of horror genre and i think he's kind of yeah. exploring with in different sub genres like you know long legs he's doing serial killer one before that gretel, gretel and hansel hansel he was mm -hmm. doing uh kind of like dark uh fairy tale stuff yep. um and then I'm the pretty thing is like a ghost story. Um, so I think it's neat. And then I don't really know what the monkey's about, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know it's about the monkey with the symbols, but that's yeah. about all I know. So, yeah. It's, it's um, a very solid uh, short story or novella. I'm not sure what it, what it clocks out at, but um, from what I understand, I think that like they're promoting it. Like when they announced the release date of it, which I think is next year sometime, um they said that it, like they they soft launched the idea of it with like it's not like a strict horror movie i think it's more of a family drama um okay. 
which I can definitely see that being very interesting. I think Oz Perkins just has such an interesting eye for just like in, well, the two things or no, th- technically three things I've seen of his because he directed an episode of uh, the Jordan Peele Twilight Zone series um, oh, okay. that I really liked. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that episode was the one that brought back the Canamites, Canamites, the Canamites from the original series. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, so good, good stuff, good stuff. Um, yeah, so, so you can find Brent's work at awakenthedark.com. And, uh, and yeah, so Brent, we're going to, uh, talk about these movies, but first I do have some news before the reviews, um, which I actually had like, two or three uh on the on the docket i had two or three like trailer things but i know that you don't really watch trailers so i nixed that from the list so uh, <laughs> i know joker came so out yeah. today when we're recording this so yeah. yeah i didn't watch that one but you can try me with the yeah. other ones i might it's possible i've seen them i don't know okay i don't really remember what i had on here <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah it's uh, i didn't see those <laughs> yeah yeah um uh, you put me on the spot here shit um <laughs> I'm, really I'm trying, trying to, think to think of, of uh, there. There was some. Yeah. I saw the F1 trailer. Oh, for the I, Brad Pitt one. Yeah, I did I not that see that. I thought that was a pretty bad trailer. Okay. Honestly, I actually thought like I don't want to say it was unfinished, but like I was Ooh. just like this is like strange. Ooh, uh, that's rough. I don't know. I mean, the movie might be good, but I just yeah. thought as a trailer, it, it, the, the first like ten seconds were good, mm-hmm. and then like it kicks in with a "We will rock you" needle drop. The Queen. It's like. Okay. I'm this is like having the I, most <laughs> like on the nose yeah like tired possible like sound you know music cue possible so I just I, I don't know what that's all about the footage looked fine mm-hmm. again it could be a really great movie but that's yeah it's going off what I've seen so everything that you've said is giving me flashbacks to every ex I've ever had um the first 10 <laughs> seconds were good <laughs> and right. then, yeah. w- there was and a what happened? we will yeah. rock you needle drop <laughs> that's the most standard thing the footage looks good and you were Brad Pitt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah so no, anyway it's <laughs> It's so dumb anyway <laughs> uh but i do have a list of topics to to bring up for the news uh if you don't mind uh digging into this and we can just kind of talk about these at various varying lengths because um i don't know uh how much we'll talk about much of any of this but the first thing i have brent is uh, a 24 film is in early development at 20th century produced by Brian Grazer, who helped produce the original series and everything. Were you a, uh, 24 head? Uh, were you a, were you a 24 guy at all? Or is your experience with it only? I, I watched a couple episodes. Yeah. I want to say, so that show was around what, like, uh, like, or, or like early 2000, like, like 2000 to like, yeah, it was like 2008 2000... or nine or something. I don't know. Yeah. It was like 2002 to like 2009. And yeah. then it came back for a revival in like 2012 and then, or 2014 and 2016. Yeah. Um, I didn't see like the live another day or die another mm-hmm. day or whatever. Um, yeah. like any of the offshoots. <laughs> Or whatever there were a couple seasons maybe one or two that i saw the one with it wasn't cal penn like um <laughs> yeah like a, a terrorist or something am i being <laughs> yeah. awful and assuming that or no I think no no that's no, no yeah. that that's right on the money okay. he played a teenager um yes. when he was yeah. definitely not a teenager <laughs> yeah. um, well that was probably around yeah. the time actually it was probably right before he was on house so i don't yeah. know who knows if there's um that helped him get house i have no idea sure but, yeah. That's a, that's a solid season. No, I think that that was actually season six. Now that I'm thinking about it, not see. I thought it was season four, but I think it's season six, which is not a great season. It has its moments. I like I I've talked about it for months at this point, but I rewatched the whole series, and like it 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 re it it refocused some things that I uh that I held a grudge against it for um. So I gained a little bit of an appreciation for it. So anyway, having said that, do you have any interest in seeing the 24 movie if it ever gets made and released? I check it out. I don't really know what I would do for catch up because I don't know that I'd want to watch the whole series. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I would watch like one or two of the kind of standalone ones that you mentioned Mm -hmm. um, to kind of get back on that mindset. But uh, 
but yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd check it out. I mean, nice. if Kiefer's up for it, you know, if they want to do it. Yeah, mm. that's my big thing is that if Kiefer comes back for it, I'm there because I waited so long because I only just recently watched Live Another Day, which is the 12 episode limited series that came out uh, sometime after the final episode. And what was so frustrating is that like the show run, ran for eight seasons and then Live Another Day came out and then they had 24 Legacy a couple of years later and then they haven't had anything after that. 24 Legacy, I haven't seen it, but it doesn't have Kiefer in it. So the Jack Bauer storyline ends with Live Another Day. And I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's so annoying that whether it's Live Another Day or it's the end of season eight of the show proper when it got canceled, it's so frustrating that they've never tied up the the Jack Bauer story satisfactorily. Mm. Like, it yeah. is left on notes that just assume that there's going to be more or there's, like, it's not a conclusive end to the arc, which is hard to do anyway with, with a show like 24 because it's hard to wrap up storylines in a real-time format and there's a whole bunch of stuff like logistically that they need to work around there but it's also just really really annoying that they haven't given that character a proper send-off so that's my one hope for this 24 movie um yeah. should it come out. i mean i hope it does that i mean i think the, the obvious question yeah. for me is someone who's not like very like casually watched it is mm. how do you do this with the feature film because yes. the idea of 24 of course it's, is that it's 24 episodes or 12 if they right for live another day did they do two hour episodes for that so or no they, they only did a half day okay they okay. so this is this is the interesting thing so I'm, I'm gonna get deep into 24 lore here for a second <laughs> so um the interesting thing about that is that there was also a prequel movie uh set before season seven i think that it was because of the writer's strike um, so like they, they were in production for season four when, or season seven, when the writer strike hit, then the, the writer strike ended, everyone went back to work. But by that point they were like, we're just going to take that year off of releasing 24. And like they, so like in that year they didn't have 24 on the air. So the next year it premiered. So they had basically like half the season to shoot in the, in the off season. And then they had more time in the off season. So they put together a, a prequel movie uh, to come out in like November before the season seven premiere. Anyway, um, that prequel movie is pretty solid, but it is a real time movie. So it is a two hour movie that takes place over the course of two hours um, for 24 uh, live another day and presumably legacy as well. Both of those shows were 12 episodes. It's in real time from the start. So it's 12 hours it's a 12 hour like day. Um, but it is, it does stick to the 24 format in that. And I think that this is a really clever way for them to do that. And I think it's interesting that they chose to do this with a limited series, but basically, um, the last episode is like, it takes place between the hours of like 10 PM and 10 AM. So it's like the other, it's the other 12 hours of the day. And I was <laughs> when thinking, people are normally awake, it's not right. like 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I went in to live another day, I thought, oh my God, so this is going to be the first time that it's not in the real time format. Like, what is that going to look like? And I was like, really like curious about that. Turns out it is in real time. It's just a, the last 10 minutes. There's a time jump 12 hours to the, the end of it. So like they conclude this show the the storyline in that like 10 minute time frame which i think is a good compromise for that so having said all that i don't know how a feature film would work in that con in that context i don't know if i would assume my my assumption based on absolutely nothing is that they could either a do the prequel thing like like the the real time two hour prequel thing that they did before season seven or they can actually abandon the real time format and do like a two hour movie in which the first uh, the first hour is basically like 23 hours of the day, like like in like a normal conventional movie. And then the second hour is that ticking time clock time time bomb thing of like we have an hour before the terrorist attack happens and we have to do this and then. 
I don't know. That's my that's that's what I would probably do. But what do I know? Um, yeah, I mean yeah. they'll they'll figure it out. I'm sure that's the that's yep. probably the first thing, the first creative uh, hurdle to kind of overcome. So yep. yeah, yep. hopefully they'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, but what they also would I can't segue out of this because the next one is really not something to segue to. Um, <laughs> the other piece of news I have is that uh, Bob Newhart passed away at the age of 94. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. Um, but were you, were you a Bob Newhart fan? Did that affect you in any way or, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I was, I was definitely sad, you know, he was, he was 94 and said, mm-hmm. so it's, you know, he's, he's, you know, older, um, but, uh, yeah, still unfortunate and, uh, yeah, usually, uh, influential, you know, not only the television world and the comedy world in general. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he just had a really awesome uh as someone who likes a deadpan delivery he's yes. kind of the patron saint of that <laughs> yep um so <laughs> so uh yeah no i mean obviously a, an all-time great it, it's unfortunate because i feel like this happens um i'm gonna say more and more but like as i learn of people's passings like i wish i had like a cool thing it's like what did you first think of yeah and the first thing that came to mind was the tag at the end of horrible bosses oh yes that he's in um and the, the it goes back to the format at the beginning of the movie where he's talking about they're, they're all talking about like their bosses and how horrible they are and text comes up and yep. and all this stuff and so bob newhart is uh jason bateman's uh new new boss but it turns out he's like this creepy twisted guy and yeah. he has this guy in the trunk and bob newhart's pretending like <laughs> oh i don't know what you're talking about so like it's such a i mean it's cool that they got him to do that movie. Oh, I think absolutely. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm sure like Jason Bateman was just totally starstruck. But uh, that was yeah. unfortunately like, the one of the first things I thought of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of unfortunate that that I mean, I mean, it's cute, but it's not like yeah. but it's such a, you know, it's it's such a it's footnote a cameo. on his whole yeah. career, you know, so anyway, yeah. so in so take that for what you will. Right. In that respect, my actual first thought was uh, a clip from The Simpsons that he was on. Okay. Right, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if this will play because it should play, but we'll see if it'll play. But uh, it's basically uh, Krusty the Clown has quote unquote passed away. And uh, uh, oh my God, why can't I think of his name? Um, uh, oh my God. Anyway. Um, yeah, I can't think. Anyway. Uh, he, Homer is about as deep as I can go. Yeah, I, I've seen I, some Simpsons, but not very much. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. Okay, we might have to have a bigger conversation. But anyway, yeah. he's introduced. Bob Newhart is introduced um, at the funeral, and this is what happens. Next in our cavalcade of celebrity mourners, Bob Newhart. Um, <clears throat> see, uh, to, to tell you the truth, I'm, um, I'm, just, I'm just killing time here. I was waiting for a, a well, a, a different, different funeral to start. I'll handle it. Bob Newhart, everybody! Oh, um, <clears throat> well, though, you know, though I, I, I started my career several years before uh, Krusty, so, you know, I could never really learn anything directly from him. Uh, still, I, I think, in a way, in a very, very meaningful way, that uh, that I, that, uh, uh, all of us, have uh, have learned from him. You know, you know that is by by being a, a clown on television for 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 so many years. Even even though, you know, many of us we we didn't we didn't watch a show. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. Did you hear that? <laughs> I didn't get any of it. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> I didn't want to step over you, but I'm sorry. More importantly, I didn't want to step over Bob either. So nice, nice. <laughs> well, uh, you'll hear it on the on the episode, hopefully. Um, <laughs> well, the deal is, so, I have a lot of Simpsons to catch up on, so ah, yes. I can start with that clip and then watch all 37 seasons as well. There you go. You really only need to see the first 12. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and it was Troy McClure who I was thinking of the character's name for, um, 
uh, uh yeah the from the Simpsons. i would not have gotten that i am yeah. <laughs> not a good simpsons trivia guy <laughs> i'm not oh, the man. guy you want at the bar trivia for simpsons yeah stuff. it's really interesting because simpsons is like my comfort show like that's it's i'll throw it on on disney plus when i'm like trying to fall asleep and stuff so so mm-hmm. yeah so anyway. i'm very basic so the office ah. is mine but, ah, there you know you we go. all we all have it so yeah um something else that someone someone else who i'm sure has the office as a comfort show maybe is uh the russo brothers who are allegedly <laughs> in talks to uh, direct avengers five and six uh what did you make of this news um by the way links to all this is in the show notes are in the show notes of the episode so what did you make of this news that the russo brothers might return for avengers five and six they are like the they are like the, the basics of the <laughs> of the directing world um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what's going on with. Is it Secret Wars? Is that, or, I, or the Kang Di- or Kang the, thing? The right? Kang, Dynasty Kang Dynasty and okay. Secret Wars, but okay. it's so that's the one thing that I'm interested about Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm not interested in the movie all that much. The one thing I'm interested in is if it is going to give any indication of how they're going to go forward with the multiverse storyline because of yeah. the Kang of it all, the Jonathan Majors of it all. Yeah, I mean, who the hell knows? Um, you know, I it, it seems like at a certain point, if they're going to figure out, if they, if they want to keep going with the mutant thing, which clearly they do, mm-hmm. and I know that they're expecting Deadpool and Wolverine to make a lot of money this weekend and yeah. uh, beyond that, and I'm sure it will. Like, sorry, at a certain point, you're going to need to figure out, it's like casting another James Bond. You're going to have to find another Wolverine. And yeah. then you're going to have to cast other... Um, X Men, which they've done before, you know, they did with mm-hmm. First Class, and I mean that was this whole other franchise. Yeah. So, but I mean, as I understand it in the comics, like Wolverine especially is like a big part of a lot of those like Avengers things. Anyway, yeah. All that to say, going back to what you were talking about with the Russos, I mean, I don't mm-hmm. even know because I don't know what those movies are even going to be. Yeah. So yeah. I just think it's funny that they like went out in the world, tried to do Cherry and like the Gray Man, mm, yeah. and like they had to like their affair with Netflix and yep. Disney's like. Come back to who's good to you, you know. <laughs> um, so I think that whole part of it is funny. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't, I, man, past that, I don't even know. Because I don't know what the movies will be. And I mean, yeah. let's be, let's be frank here. Like, it's, it's going to be Kevin's show for five right. and six or whatever. Like, they're going to do whatever his vision is yeah. for it. And that's fine. Like, it's obviously up for quite a few years. Right. Um, so... Yeah, I, I do think the optics of it are funny, but I mean, yeah. I don't even know what those movies are going to end up being, so oh. it's, it's hard to know. <laughs> yeah, same here. Same, same here. Um, Yeah, I don't know either. I Like, we'll see. It, it would be, in an ideal world, it would be nice if I could get drawn back into the MCU and be excited about it again. But part of it is, and I'm sure I've communicated this on the podcast before, but part of it is that A, it it's past its moment. Like it's, it's past, uh, like for me, end game was like the defining thing of this whole endeavor. Um, and it hasn't reached that height yet. Um, again, but the other side of it is, am I growing out of it? Like, is it also a thing where I'm like, I'm pushing 40. Like I just turned 38. (laughs) Like maybe I'm just not, in the demographic for this anymore. And like people that are my age are older than, than, than I am now. Like they, it can absolutely still be in their wheelhouse because a lot of people have like the basis of like the comics and everything. I'm just a fan of the MCU. I don't have the context of the comic books or anything or the IP. It's just like, Oh, these are cool, big spectacle movies. Um, so I don't know. That's, that was the the caveat that I wanted to throw out there. So I don't get, canceled or anything (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean it's just i feel like they they've just kind of run into just various issues with i I think the seams are really showing more in regards to the planning of Mm -hmm. of like the whole the whole universe and all the uh intertextuality and that stuff i think that's kind of you know fallen down that's 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 been like that had been the backbone i think for a really long time yeah and I think that's where it's starting to kind of lose the plot, if you will. Um, so who knows? I mean, by who by the time five and six run around, I mean, God, who knows? It right. Could be 
we could be totally different people by then but uh yep but yep. yeah i mean as you know i'm i'm just trying to get through uh dead Deadpool and and Deadpool and Wolverine. It's, yes, okay. Deadpool ampersand. Yeah. I'm just trying to get through Wolverine. a di- third Deadpool movie. <laughs> yes, so. exactly. I know people are really excited for it. Yeah, I, yeah. I I will. I'm doing my best. Yeah. I, I have. I really enjoyed the first one. I uh, I thought the second one was okay, and we're gonna see how we do with this one. <laughs> yep, we'll we'll see. Um, and something else we'll be seeing eventually. Uh, and this will be brief. Um, is that uh, is it Noah Hawley? Hawley, uh, mm-hmm. his FX uh, Alien series has finished filming, and it has the title Alien mm. Colon Earth, which I think is not a very exciting title. Um, <laughs> Alien <laughs> That's where Earth, we live. <laughs> really, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, On Earth, everyone can hear you scream, Am right? I just, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you make of this? Are you excited about it? Or, and are you excited for alien Romulus here in like a couple of weeks? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic for Romulus. I do like, uh, Fede Alvarez. I think he's, mm-hmm. you know, done some, some pretty neat work in the, in the, in the horror realm. So this will be, yeah. um, you know, kind of his foray into the, uh, into the alien franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a huge Prometheus fan, not a huge covenant fan either really yeah. um i know they have their their uh their ardent i won't even say defenders i mean just whatever right. people especially prometheus i think people really go to bat for that one um yeah. that's, that's cool i mean i'm just like like i've seen i haven't seen what's the one on rider one resurrection resurrection yes i yeah. have not seen that one mm-hmm. I think I've seen probably the rest because I've seen the original. Okay. I've seen Aliens. I did see three, which was okay. later in my film education. Sure. Because I had a, it was a Fincher blind spot, which mm. I think is probably half the reason that's that some people watch Aliens right. later go back to it is because, oh, David Fincher's, <laughs> you know, one of his first movies, his first right. feature, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so um, <laughs> so I haven't seen like Resurrection and then I've seen Prometheus. I don't know what else there is, but anyway yeah i've seen most of them so anyway i you know yeah i I, that was another trailer i think i saw in theaters and they do Mm. the you know the lines and the title coming up and all that and it's like oh i think they they got it they saw the original trailer too (laughs) exactly and i think they do i think they change it up a little bit with like in space no one can hear you but they don't say scream it's just in space no one can hear you it's like okay Mm -hmm. that i mean the that's true (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, uh, sound but does yeah. not uh, travel in space. No, I'm, no. I'm told, but I, yeah. I do like uh, Noah Hawley. Speaking of space, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Lucy in the Sky, not not as much. That movie ah, is was that a him? Very interesting. Uh, that's one that came out in oh man, uh, 2020, I want to say. Yeah, was 21. it 2020? I didn't see it. I was interested in it. Oh but... man, it, it's an interesting. It's an interesting. I don't even want to say mess. It's mm-hmm. it's not a boring bad movie. Okay. I was 2019. It, it, it is 2019. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I forgot if it was yeah, pre or post pandemic, but yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those ones like looks great on paper. Like if you look at, you know, Noah Holly, if you look at what he's done on, you know, with FX and on TV. Yeah. And then like, if you look at the cast, like there's a lot of stuff that really adds up on paper with that movie that uh, does not get translated. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, there's an amazing line that Ellen Burstyn has uh, in particular. Anyway, <laughs> okay. it's uh, it's an interesting movie. But anyway, all to mm-hmm. say, I think that yeah, Noah Hawley certainly earned um, certainly in the television realm, mm-hmm. uh, you know, good faith through the Fargo stuff, which I, yeah. I I really enjoy that that series a lot. So um, so yeah, I'll probably check out Earth too. I'm I'm already nice. planning on reviewing Romulus. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, if it's better yeah. than Kevin and, and uh, Prometheus, Prometheus, yeah. Uh, I'll be happy. I think it's funny that it probably good. I should say I, I'm actually glad that Ridley Scott is doing Gladiator 2. Oh, yeah. Like, because I feel like I'm actually kind of excited for that movie, even though I wasn't expecting that is a trailer I did watch. Right. Uh, and that movie looks totally ridiculous. It looks and insane. I, I wouldn't want anyone else to do that. Like, yeah, it, like I kind of feel like. Yeah, if he wants to, I mean, he's already done. He's done <clears throat> multiple alien movies and yeah. you know, whatever. But uh, like he's got to be the one to do the gladiator. I don't right. want anyone else taking up that helm. Yeah. Uh, whereas like an alien movie, yeah, I get uh, like someone like like, like Fede Alvarez or yeah. y- you know other people in there. So that's yeah. that's cool. So 
Yeah. <laughs> Denny Villeneuve doing Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the Gladiator 2 trailers. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, honestly, yeah, especially. Just Denzel alone. I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean. Oh, yeah. Good God. Yeah. yeah. And especially after seeing. And the, like, I don't know, because obviously Ridley Scott, he's, you know, he's he's not a spring chicken. Um, but like seeing how well he did all of the set pieces in um, uh, The Last Duel was just like, OK, right. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready for Gladiator 2. Um, he's one of those guys that I mean, he yeah. still has it, you know, yeah. certainly like at at times, mm. you know, even like Napoleon like yeah. has some really, really awesome uh, set pieces house yep. of Gucci has his moments and i mean those are just ones he's directed what like the past 12 months <laughs> right I mean, seriously <laughs> really. um but uh yeah so i mean mm. gladiator gladiator is one of the i guess i'm getting off the tangent if you can believe it but like gladiator is one of those <laughs> movies i never really took all that seriously okay. like i like that movie but i think it's it's that sort of like his, that sort of like anachronistic like badassery that w- mm-hmm. really scott does like that's kind of how i took napoleon too because yeah. like there's moments in that movie that's like of course none of this happened the way that it's happening in this movie right you know i i, I call it like really visionist history which i'm sure has been taken on you know a, sure. a million other like think pieces have probably coined that phrase but it's just like that's kind of how i take like gladiator like they just mm-hmm. treat it like it's wwf at that right time. it would have been 2000 i think and it's like it's fun like it's a fun movie for me i don't oh, yeah. like a- anyway so all that to say i think that's the spirit with which i took gladiator 2 and that's why like i don't i'm not like oh man they're like gonna tarnish gladiators legacy right. i'm like oh, i really feel all that seriously again i'm not like yeah. trashing the movie i don't think it's a bad movie by any means i enjoy no. it but i don't hold it with the same reverence of like you can't mess with that i'm like right. don't mess with it i don't yeah. care <laughs> no yeah and like I loved how the kind of discourse around Gladiator 2's trailer was like, oh, it's so, like, the, and, uh, it's anachronistic. There's a rap song in the in the trailer. Like, what the hell? And, like, <laughs> yeah. people were pointing out, like, the, the, um, the Super Bowl trailer for the first Gladiator was, like, just as over the top and ridiculous. <laughs> like, Yeah, wasn't it, like, st- uh, P.O.D. or something like so. that? I think so. Something like, like that. Some yeah. post-grunge or whatever they called that genre. It was very in your yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah. And then the... He, he's always done that. I mean, Jay-Z did oh, the yeah. whole score for... Um, or he did a number of songs for, like, American Gangster, which doesn't take place in time where rap was like... Sure. There's a million examples for that. So yeah. it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we'll see what happens. It'll 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 be fun. Um, yeah. And then the last, and this can, we don't need to. We, I just want to announce it. The last piece of news I have before the reviews uh, is that I forgot to mention the last couple of episodes. I think that Severance season two has a premiere date, January seventeenth, twenty twenty five. Severance on Apple TV Plus is one of my favorite shows. Um, that first season is like is such a good sci-fi thriller workplace uh storyline it's it's so clever so good um and i just recently like rewatched it from beginning to end and it was just like oh my god just like the intricacies of it the the core setup and the way that it kind of evolves throughout the show is so good and made me like, it's very thought provoking. So, um, on Patreon, I have reviews of each of the episodes from season one. I'll be doing season two, uh, in January, but, um, Brent, how do you feel about this? January 17th, 2025 severance season two. Yeah. I'm excited for it. It's, uh, in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did you like the first uh, season? Did you watch the first season? I, I, I have watched it. Yeah. I, I like it quite a bit. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a really strong show and mm-hmm. definitely one of those ones that picked up a lot of really good word of mouth. I think Apple yeah. has, you know, really been trying to, I know there was some stuff like behind the scenes with like the showrunners and stuff. Yeah. Like I'm sure they just want to like, get this thing going. Cause like mm. they have other shows that people care about and watch. Um, but that's really one that picked up a lot of steam. Yeah. Um, so they just, they, I'm sure they're just champing at the bit. They cannot wait for it to, to get out there. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah they, I don't know. I hate to add a little tag on to, sure. to here, but, um, they, it was, I think this was like in the headlines today or something. Ooh. Did you see the projected cost, uh, average, uh, budget for each of the episodes? Oh, no, I didn't. $20 million. <laughs> that's not the entire season. 
just which, each I mean, that episode. Would actually be, oh, yeah. Each episode, the average is 20 million. Now, I don't know how many episodes there God. are. I think the first season, there were, what, eight or ten? The maybe? first season had nine. And I think okay. the second season is supposed to have ten. But okay. I could be wrong. So there you go. That's, that's you know, 200 million plus whatever, you know. And that's so exciting. I, yeah. yeah. So, you know, who who knows? I don't know how you, I, I get there. I, Apple, I don't yep. think, has really shied away from, like, all of their series that I've watched, like, they look really expensive. Yeah. Like, it looks like they spend probably as much money as they do. Yeah. Um, they kind of do fewer series, but I think mm-hmm. they put more money into it and they... Just, I think they take bigger swings with stuff. Yeah. And I think Severance, if you are going to do a budget that big, that's probably one of your safer bets in terms of, totally. um, you know, people uh, people watching it. So, yep. yeah, I hope it pays off. I'm, yeah. I'm excited for it. Me too. Me too. Um, I know that there was like trouble behind the scenes. I think it, the production got delayed a couple of times, maybe. There was some, some stuff going on. And like, I kept thinking about that while I was rewatching the first season because... I kept thinking that like, oh man, I can't get my hopes up for season two. I just can't. Like the first season is so, is so like my jam. It is so perfectly like tuned to my interests, my, like, I'm so receptive to everything that happened in that, in that season that I need to prepare myself for season two being not of that caliber. Um, and then as I'm rewatching the first season, as I'm getting to the finale, as I'm like watching the finale, I'm like, they set this up f- to like, they set up a, they set up a, a masterpiece of a second season. <laughs> like yeah. the way that the show ends in the first season, it's like, it sets the stage for what I think could be an incredible second season. Um, yeah. Huge cliffhanger. Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. I mean, oh yeah. I won't say any so more than good. that, but I mean, you know, something that needs to needs be to be resolved. To. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We need answers. <laughs> yes. And uh, and speaking of things that need to be responded to, um, we're about to review Twisters. And Brent, I'm going to ask you a question that should be responded to. Um, <laughs> uh, that's my weird segue to get to the to the review. Um, we're going to be reviewing Twisters uh, it, currently in theaters. It was released on July 19th. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the non spoiler and spoiler review for Twisters, Brent, I want to ask you what is your relationship to the original movie Twister, uh, directed by Jean uh, Jean de Bont? Um, and starring Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt from 1996. Um, what's your relationship with Twister? Twister, I feel like, was a little bit before my time. Mm-hmm. Just a scotch. Um, it came out when I was about, you know, six or seven. Um, you know, the poster actually kind of, sca- I guess I was a little wimp because it kind of scared me. It's a really big, like, black pillar. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a tor- you know, tornado, obviously. But just, like, it looks um, really threatening and insurmountable. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that like informed my, you know, decision to maybe watch it like more like in the like early 2000s or when I was like actually more of a teenager then. Mm-hmm. Um, this was one I think it was on T- TNT quite a bit too. So it was okay. definitely one that I would see bits and pieces of, um, on TV as well. Um, I don't have like a particular fondness for it. I re- rewatched it last week, um, dutifully before. Uh, Twisters didn't have too much of a change of opinion. I, I feel like the the effects, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's like it looks it looks good for the time. Like I, I you know, hate to be the one to like slag the you know effects or whatever, except that opening yeah. satellite shot, which is amazingly bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, like other than that, it's like I know it's by ILM. Like they're throwing money at it. Like they sure. they they did what they did. So you know, is what it is. Um, so yeah, don't have any, like particularly, I don't have any like real nostalgia for it personally. Um, but I know that there are people that, that really do that. It's like a real linchpin of kind of nineties, uh, action slash, you know, disaster movies, cinema. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that because 1996, Imagine, if you will, a 10-year-old Matt Hurt um, who had a fascination with meteorology and, in particular, tornadoes. Um, I 
I don't know what it was when I was like between like the ages of like eight and 10, I was like obsessed with tornadoes. Um, yeah. Like I, I remember in fourth grade, like, um, so, so in 1994, we moved from Ohio here to Indian, Indianapolis. Um, and I remember in like 90, I think it was 94 or maybe 90s. I don't, who cares? Anyway, um, when we moved here in fourth grade, uh, whatever year I was in fourth grade, I remember doing like a whole like science fair project about tornadoes, doing like the whole like two liter jug thing to simulate a funnel in it. Um, I was obsessed with tornadoes. And like I recently found um, I, I got a, a like a box of like old pictures and assignments and stuff and yearbooks and everything from my sister's like garage. Um And in it, I found <laughs> a picture that I'd forgotten I'd forgotten about this, but like when we first moved here to Indianapolis, um, my mom like contacted like the news and like arranged it. So like I could go meet like the meteorologist from the news and like, he would tell me like, like, Oh, this is what it's like and everything. This is everything. And I'm like, Oh, cool. And there's a picture of me like at the news desk sitting there for some reason. Like I have like, I have like a button down shirt, a tie and (laughs) For some reason, a gold necklace. <laughs> like I, wow. I have no idea why. <laughs> like what the hell? Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, so all that's to say, I in 1996, my uh, mom took me to the theater to see Twister, um, and I loved it. Like I was obsessed with that movie. That was one of like it's one of my like fabled first favorite movies. Um, I was obsessed with it. Also at the time. Like in the in the interim between the move from Ohio to uh, Indianapolis, my mom like had some kind of workman's comp issue with her employer when we lived in Ohio. So she had to go back and forth between Ohio and Indianapolis uh, somewhat routinely as that got worked out. Like, I don't know if it was like a court thing or whatever, but like she had to make trips to Ohio. Um, And I remember like she was very much like like she driving long distances. She would almost exclusively do it at night. Um, Hmm. so she would drive at night and like, she would take like me and my sister brother, like with her on the trip, um, occasionally. And like, I remember like being in the car and like just staring out the window and imagining like in the darkness of night, just imagining a tornado, (laughs) like just touching down and like, (laughs) just like being like really like weird about that. Um, I'm glad for your sake it didn't actually happen. Yeah, <laughs> I I am too. I am too. Um, but yeah, but I loved Twister. It was a formative movie growing up. And also, there is a TV movie that came out the same year called, starring uh, Devin Sawa uh, called Night of the Twisters. Did you ever see that? No, <laughs> It's not. so cheesy, but like... Was that I, a volcano Dante's Peak thing for... Uh, for tornadoes <laughs> I, I always assumed that it was like a response like i always assumed like they put through together this tv movie but i think it was like a like a dante's peak and and volcano situation um i guess night of the twisters was based on a novel or or, or something also but anyway i remember like I remember watching that like I we taped it on VHS and like I watched it because I was obsessed with tornadoes but I was like this isn't this isn't twister um but the funny thing about that also is that it takes place obviously like in like tornado alley and like in like middle America but it's it is like the most Canadian production. Like everyone has a <laughs> thick Canadian accent. <laughs> they had to shoo away the Mounties. Pretty and, much. And pretty moose, much. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Um, like, oh my God, they're getting the Tim Hortons. Um, but yeah, but anyway, all that's to say, I love Twister and I was cautiously, I, I'm not even cautiously optimistic. I was excited to see Twisters. I thought it looked cool. I figured it's not going to have much to do with the original movie, but maybe it'll like ignite some nostalgia for me. Um, And over the years, my experience with the original Twister is that like I watched it, I rewatched it recently, but I also rewatched it a few years ago. And like, it was so interesting that I hadn't seen it in a long time, but like rewatching it uh, those years ago, I like pinpointed like, oh yeah, okay, this is this was produced by Spielberg. It's an Amblin Entertainment movie, and like you can really tell that Spielberg touch of it, like everything from like the 
you know, the, the troubled marriage, the divorce, pending divorce thing. And just, it has that energy. Um, and so I kind of got like a new appreciation for it when I rewatched it, like a more mature appreciation. And then I rewatched it recently and it's, it's, it rules. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's my spiel about Twister. Um, <laughs> let's go in to a non-spoiler review of Twisters, which like I said, is in theaters right now. It came out July 19th. Uh, the premise according to IMDb is a retired tornado chaser and meteorologist is persuaded to return to Oklahoma to work with a new team and new technologies. Uh, director was Lee Isaac Chung. Uh, screenwriter was Mark L. Smith with a story by credit from Joseph Kaczynski. And the movie stars Daisy Edgar Jones, Glenn Powell, Anthony Ramos, uh, Brandon Piria, uh, uh, Maura Tierney, uh, Harry Hayden Patton, and Sasha Lane and Katie O'Brien. Uh, so Brent, uh, in non-spoilers, how did you feel about Twisters? Well, last time I was on, we talked about another Glenn Powell movie and I said that I had a couple, I had a pair of hot takes for you. Uh I don't have a pair of them, so it's not twins, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, but I, I will say I, I enjoyed Twisters more than, uh, more than Twister, um, having rewatched it and then probably even like, you know, originally or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. This is, I think, a rare legacy sequel that I think actually maybe benefits from having some time from the original. Wow. Um, because I think the the effects are definitely there. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's so tough because anytime you're watching these movies, it's like, you know, it looks great to me. I think the budget was about 150 million. Like it looks gargantuan. Like mm-hmm. they they shot this on film. Like it, it has such an awesome um, look to it. But you know, I, I think the the effects are really outstanding as well. Again, by today's standards, I have no idea how they'll look 28 years from now. Sure, uh, but uh, but I I think it was really excellent. I think the thing that kind of you know that sort of stuff is you know th- those are kind of again that sort of dates it no matter when, whether it's in 2024 or 1996, you're, you're kind of beholden to whatever happens, um, wherever the effects are or whatever. But, um, I think the thing that kind of put this over for me actually was the, uh, the story, the writing and the characters. One thing I do, I do really appreciate about Twister. And I don't know that Twister's best sit is the, just the, deepest bench of 90s action actors possible oh my god it's, um, it's, that was insane rewatching it it's like yeah. an all-timer it's amazing <laughs> so that was crazy um even what's his name uh, fishler uh shows uh, up uh, yeah he, i he's forgot there for not very long yeah but oh man it was oh, amazing yeah. and you know uh phil seymour hoffman's birthday is today so of course we have to oh i didn't know that for him wow. yeah so uh you know so just you know, really sucks that he's not with us, but I mean, yeah. you know, an early role of his, um, I think he would have been probably in his like late twenties, you know, something yeah. like that. And he's just, uh, you know, he says, welcome to the suck zone or whatever, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, and that's, <laughs> he's and just so, like, he's so good in it. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, my family isn't <laughs> listening to this, unfortunately, but, uh, mm. there's a whole thing when we were in, cause I don't think I saw Twisters in 96. I'm almost positive. Okay. Apparently, like my parents did. Uh-huh. And there's that scene where the other, the one with Carrie Elways and the, the whole mm-hmm. other crew, they're late to a tornado or something that yeah. already dissipated or something. And he, and he goes, loser, move on. <laughs> yes. And my parents somehow that got in their brains and we were in, uh-huh. oh God, Monticello, I think. We were mm. at, at um, Virginia, I think it is. And it was started raining or something. And there was this whole thing where we were walking and all these cars were like driving away and, they kept pointing at them and saying that. And anyway, <laughs> great line from the movie. Nice. Very strange anecdote from you <laughs> yeah. know, 97, 96, whenever that uh, we we went there. But um, that's awesome. Anyway, all that to say that it, that is still that still really plays like mm-hmm. Paxton and Helen Hunt. Like they're all good. Like all that oh, stuff yeah. like really works. Um, but I think this is like a really solid update. I really I nice. had a good time. That, that's so awesome to hear. Like I, I, I am maybe going to be a little bit more, I don't want to say harsh toward it because it is a very, very solid movie. Like I think it is a very entertaining, very solid movie. Like you said, shot on film looks gorgeous. 
Um, the effects are great. The variety of it all is really good. It 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 distances it dins, oh, distances itself from the original in some unique ways. It ups the ante a lot, and there's some there's some good character development and really good characterization in it. Um, so I I really like I really like a lot of it, but I just don't know. There there are two criticisms that I'll levy at it. One is not a fault of the movie. It's just that the original is such a pivotal movie for me that I don't I don't know if the entertainment value of the original will ever be sapped out for me. Like mm-hmm. I don't think I'll ever not find it extraordinarily entertaining and fun and exciting. And because of that, anything else like in the vicinity, the vicinity of it, anything in the quote unquote universe of it, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to stand the test of time. I'm not going to be here in 20 years, uh, or Jesus, 20, almost, almost 30 years. Is that right? Can I math? 30 years? Uh, it's uh, 20, 28 Fuck. years. I hope so. Cause that's what I put in my review. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus I don't know Christ. if I even double check the math then. But anyway. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I just, that's so depressing. Um, but uh, I don't know if in like 28 years or however long I'll be like, oh, Twisters, this is iconic and everything and all that. Now, where's my walker? I, I don't know. Uh, I'll be old. <laughs> anyway. Jetpack. Um, yes. The optimistic yes. man. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were promised jetpacks. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. but But despite that, I do find it incredibly entertaining. And the other criticism that I'll levy, levy at it, though is more of an actual criticism of it is that in as much as it does do some really unique, interesting things, it does like, it's not just them redoing the Dorothy thing from the original movie. It's they're doing something different. And as far fetched as it seems in the grand scheme of things, it is bigger. It is interesting. And the interior logic of the movie follows solidly with it. So I can't fault it for that. The thing that I think is missing from this movie is that Amblin effect, that Steven Spielberg style, like the, I don't even want to, I don't even want to like pigeonhole it to like family drama, but like that sense of adventure and closeness and like that kind of, here's like, okay, this, I'm going to try this, this analogy that could be perfect or could be completely fall apart, but there is something to like a Spielberg slash Amblin entertainment style, like story that it has that family drama, that, that drama between characters that's based in like their connection to each other, that it's like, it's like Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton in that movie are two magnets that are like drawn together they are they're perfect together but throughout the run of the movie they have been turned the opposite way from each other so they're pushing like as much as they want to be pulled together they're being pushed away and like the magic of a spielberg movie or an amblin entertainment movie like with spielberg's branding is the magic trick of that is flipping the magnets back over to have them connect again and I didn't get that from this movie at all. Um, there is a pretty standard, like, blossoming, like, romance or connection that's formed between Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar Jones throughout the movie, which is great. Like, they have really good chemistry. It's really strong. But it's based in, like, this mutual respect that grows between them for meteorology and everything. It's not, like, an established thing that's... It's not flipping the magnets around to connect it's it's more just growing them in kind of a routine sort of movie uh um uh make a blockbuster movie way and that's that's the that's the biggest criticism i can probably levy at twisters so i don't know if that made sense yeah i mean that that it's that it's contrived that you kind of know that they're Mm -hmm. gonna end up you know of course like together i think that was one of the things that i Person. Well, actually, I, I want. I want. Well, I guess I'll talk about the the Amlin thing. I think that's interesting. I mm-hmm. agree with you. You're absolutely right. Like Spielberg has this touch where it's this sense of adventure and these family dynamics. There's mm-hmm. these certain beats. I do feel like the Twins, Twisters does um, go for that. I think it, in some in some ways, but I do think that because um, 
it's 2024, we have a lot more of like, you know, Daisy Edgar Jones is like overcoming tragedy, you know, mm-hmm. and like trauma from this like opening prologue and everything. Yeah. And like, so she's like this wounded heroine sort of thing where it's like, I don't know, again, like Twister, it's like, it, it's not trying to come in with that sort of baggage. Right. Um, and, I don't think it makes Twister's like a worse movie in that regard, but sure. it's like, you kind of wish it's just like, it doesn't need to be anyway. Yeah. yeah well, that's the interesting thing too, is that Twister, it does touch on that a little bit with Helen Hunt's Joe's like backstory of, of her father. Um, but that is, that is like, that is in the background. That's like, that's not a prominent thing. The prominent thing is signing the divorce papers and the kind of back and forth between them that they're, they clearly still have feelings for each other. And like it, even, it, even in the original movie, when, uh, Jamie Gertz and Helen Hunt are at the, at the diner and they're just standing there and Helen Hunt's like eating like something like, I think it's, she's chewing gum or something. I don't know. And then, uh, Jamie Gertz is like, you're still in love with him, aren't you? And then like, just like the, the beauty of how she doesn't respond like verbally, but like, she's like, yeah. basically like she's saying like, yeah, I am, but she doesn't say it. She's just like, all right, well, we got to go. It's just like this. I don't know. There's just such an energy to it that feeds into that like love triangle element of it. And that kind of thing is, was just missing here for me in Twisters. Yeah. I miss yeah. her to, to, you know, as good as it gets, yeah. you know, quote a movie that she did a year later. It's like, she's, she's uh, awesome. Like in the nineties. So I, yeah. I really, uh, I, I really miss her. Um, you know, and it, it was a joy to, it was honestly, it was a joy to see her in her element in the nineties doing that thing. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. So, you know, that's, that, that was really neat. But um, mm. yeah. So in terms of, I mean, I actually said this in my review. So like, this is maybe going a little far, but like mm-hmm. there's, for rewatching it for me, I was definitely getting a lot of like screwball sort of comedy between like Paxton and Hunt in mm-hmm. uh, Twister. So I got related to like bringing up Baby, but they're, you know, all sorts yeah. of basically saying that both of the movies, in terms of how they handle the romance between the, lead, the leads, goes back to old Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So if you're like looking like screwball comedy for that, what they're kind of going for more here in Twister is, is, I said shop around the corner, but pick any movie where it's, you know, two people that there's more <laughs> irony to it. And, you know, but something where it's like, you know, they're, of course, starting out more as foils. Sure. And then, you know, you know that they're going to come together. Um, so, Anyway, all to say, I I like that they still kind of kept the storytelling in that way in terms of the romance, kind of mm. old fashioned. Because again, I think there's ways that they do bring this up to you know modern times or whatever. But I, I appreciate that it still has that sort of like um, if you I get you could say conventional, I guess, but like sure. you know, it's sort of like a like a comfort. I. I think that this is one of those movies I was messaging with a friend of mine earlier who didn't know that this was out yet. Mm. Um, and I said, this is kind of one of those movies that kind of has something for everyone. Um, yeah. Even though it's very much a disaster movie, um, it's also very much a suburb blockbuster in terms of like, yeah. it's kind of going to give you like, you know, you got Glenn Powell, like they're pushing so hard for him to be the the next it, new thing. And um, it's working so well it, on me, and man. It works, you it's know, yeah, so they're, good. They're working on it and, and it yep. works. Um, and, and that's, that's a part of it too. I, I Daisy Edgar Jones, I, I haven't seen, uh, normal people, um, Me neither. but, uh, you know, based on crawdads, I, that's, I don't think that was really yeah. a good movie, but yeah. like, you know, she was fine in it. I think this is a way better showcase for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think, you know, they have a lot of chemistry, you know, yeah. uh, Glenn Powell and, um, Daisy Edgar Jones, you know, I, I don't know if I'd like compare it between like Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. Like they're great in that too. I don't know. It's a different thing. Um, yeah. But I think that at least they have that similar sort of spark. Um, hmm. I mentioned like the depth of the bench in Twister. Um, we do get some really, you know, like fun. You mentioned um, like Sasha Lane, mm-hmm. um, Katie O'Brien. Uh, th- there's yeah. like, there are some, there are some fun like players. Like, all these people are crazy. Like that's yeah. the point. Oh of, yeah these movies is and you have in the original twister you know jamie gertz's character is kind of the anchor of like 
you yes. people are insane. Like I shouldn't even be riding with you. And right. then in Twisters, you have the I don't know the actor's name, but the British uh, journalist yeah. who's uh, trying to you know who's, who's <laughs> doing a piece on that Glenn Powell's character. Um, so he's the one that's like, oh my god, I hate that I'm in this car, right. but I have to be. Um, so yeah. there are definitely some things that kind of carry over in terms of like the let's face it, like the kind of stock characters, but yeah. um, but it it, it still. You know, still plays it it does it really does and to get kind of deeper into the movie a little bit um still in non-spoilers is i really like how this isn't this isn't a direct sequel this is this is barely tethered to the original movie there are some mm-hmm. easter eggs here and there there's like lines of dialogue like like the simplest thing of like of kate played by daisy edgar jones like like just like saying to Anthony Ramos uh, when she's going into the motel, like, oh, I'm not back. Like just that, that echoing Bill Paxton's uh, lines in, in the original, like little things like that are really good. But the thing that I, the the point in the movie where I kind of locked in and I got more, more deep into it were, uh, there were a couple of parts, one I'll talk about in spoilers, but um the big thing was like the kind of inversion of of the storm chasing um teams. Mm-hmm. So like in the original you have Carrie Elways being this corporate stooge who has all of this funding but none of the instincts and l- then you have um uh Helen Hunt's team that's all like improvised and like just like scattered like they ha- like it's just very like punk rock it's very held like, together with duct tape just ex- barely exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly and it's showing that they have this passion for it and everything and then here 28 years later you have twisters where the people that care about the science the the meteorologists on the surface and and they have everything is like they're funded by by people and they they have all the equipment and everything and the people that are kind of intruding are the social media influencer crowd, the, the like daredevil, uh, people that have like YouTube channels and stream like streaming stuff and freaking drills that go into the ground to keep them in place. (laughs) So they can like, it's just, it's so like that felt just so unique and interesting. And Mm -hmm. I like how that further develops throughout the movie, which I'll talk about in spoilers. But I like, as soon as you saw, you see the distinction between the two groups, um, and like you put that together as it being like an inverse from the original is like, it just clicked to me like, Oh, this is going to be very interesting because it is a modern take on this thing that, was huge in 1996 in terms of the movie. Um, and it's an interesting spin on it. So no pun intended with funnel clouds and, and tornadoes um, yeah. spinning. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> a great point. Cause you're right. It is really an inversion where it's like, mm. yeah, Gary always, he's, it's almost like a swashbuckler thing. He's basically, yeah. you know, he, he have a Southern accent in it. I think like, uh, yeah. his idea of a Southern <laughs> yeah. accent was, um, and you're right. He's the one with the funding. He's the one with the, you know, they have the mm. nicer equipment, I believe yeah. and stuff like that. And then the more rambunctious ones, you know, are, yeah, Helen Hunt, Bill Paxton, they're kind of hanging on by a thread, but they have the instinct for it. You're right, it is an inversion this time um, in that uh, Daisy Edgar Jones' character is working with uh, Anthony Ramos and, Mm -hmm. you know, their crew, where it's, they're like... um, like safe light guys like they're in yeah. like the vans yeah and they have like the nice like preppy polos very starched mm-hmm. and very you know it's and it's it's its own thing and then they you know then the you know the the country pop song is being blared around <laughs> sure. the corner and you're like oh man these these assholes you know so yeah. it's like it, it's funny that you're right that the youtubers now are like it's uh yeah it's like a if it's the nerds versus the slobs it's like the nerds are the protagonists here although yeah like we'll talk about in the spoilers where things yeah. go which might be obvious but anyway. yeah. <laughs> which also feels like really good in like the first couple of acts or the first half of the movie really where you see like it's it's great to see the people in this universe who are passionate about this and knowledgeable and educated and like they've they've devoted their lives to this are the ones that have the money, who have the backing to get the data and get everything. And then, of course, you know, drama unfolds with that and everything. But just like the introduction of that is like, oh, that's cool. Like we we've, we've got like the Helen Hunt equivalent team, like with all the big toys and everything. It's it's really good <laughs> yeah. and really satisfying. Yeah. Um, and then Glenn Powell comes and throws freaking fireworks into tornadoes. So, 
they said it couldn't be done. Yeah, or they said the they didn't know if it could worlds. be done. And yeah. they, tried it. <laughs> yeah. they said it couldn't be done. Actually, no one really said anything about it. Um, <laughs> no, but it was no really even, cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. Um, performances, uh, what like do you, it, it's still non spoilers, and we can switch over to spoilers here in a moment. Um, anything stand out to you in terms of performance? I know you talked about Daisy Edgar Jones, uh, our boy Glenn Powell. How do you think he stacked up? I, I'd completely forgotten that the last episode you were on, we talked about Hitman, and yeah, you're you're now the Glenn Powell, uh, <laughs> kind of ambassador for the podcast. <laughs> I'll, I'll say I knew him when. Um, nice. I think Hitman, he's d- able to do more because he's doing a lot of different kind of performances, and I did, I do. Mm think he's he's really good in that movie i just i had more kind of story direction issues with that movie but sure. um here he's doing you know more of a kind of straight line thing <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun he absolutely knows what uh he's doing uh you know he has this like he is so like even more so than top gun maverick in which he is like kind of antagonist turn pro- protagonist by the end of it yeah where- He's just like, it's like, oh, you just like want to wipe that smile off of his face. Yep. Um, he like even turns it up more here at certain points, especially mm-hmm. like in the beginning, where it's almost like, oh my God, you are so, such a scoundrel. Yes. That you're almost, you're skirting that line. <laughs> yeah. But hey, what, what, what would a scoundrel do that wasn't that? But yeah. um, anyway, regardless, um, I think he's, he's very good at that. And I think, again, even more than Top Gun Maverick, like he's, you know, he's more in an actual like lead role here, yeah. um, especially. So it's, uh, it's fun to see him. Uh, he's, he's, he's a fun find and, uh, you know, he's, he's clearly making uh, a big name for himself and, yeah. uh, you know, he's, he's a coronation from the, the cruise coronation and yep. all that. And, uh, you know, Hey, you know, I mean, I, I think, I think he has the goods. I've seen enough mm-hmm. of what he's, what uh, enough of his work, um between you know going back to uh, you know everybody wants some um but you know between like hitman maverick this you know where it's like yeah you know yeah go ahead bring on the a, the movie stardom yeah you know bona fide movie star yep yeah, and he's why not he's great here yeah yeah um, i will put in a good word for uh mara tierney too um, oh yes i didn't know she was really in wonderful until... to see her yeah. in these like like i thought she was wonderful in the iron claw a very different movie oh that's um, i forgot she where was she's in that. yeah she's like the 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 kind of i guess sort of well i mean yeah sort of matriarch of mm-hmm. of, of this family that just a tragedy of tragedy and just is just uh, all these ornaments of 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 loss kind of hanging off her in that mm-hmm. movie um here she can cut loose a lot more but she's yep. very like um She's very like delightfully pushy. Yep. Like Glenn Powell shows up, this is a spoiler, like to their mm-hmm. house where Daisy Edgar Jones and, and she are and everything. And he like shows up or whatever. And then uh, you know, before he can even say, you know, uh, oh, I wouldn't want to impose, she's like, Nope, you're staying for dinner. Yep. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just like it's just so great. And she's like, All right, you're gonna help me set the table. Yep. And it's just like it's, it's so great. yeah. So it's, uh, it's so good yeah. for like the kind of you know, flyover state, middle America kind of, yes. kind of vibe for it. It's, it's great. For sure. Um, and also this can be really quick and everything, but, uh, I do want to point out that not only are you now the official ambassador for Glenn Powell on the podcast, cause, oh my God, Top Gun Maverick. That's right. You also was three on for, for three. That. Yeah. Anytime uh, Glenn is there, yeah. I, I am there as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you are also the de facto, um, uh, Katie O'Brien, uh oh yeah uh the ambassador because love mm-hmm. lies ble- bleeding um yeah i thought she was fine in this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah she was good it was funny to see what's his name uh corn corn swift swift corn swift oh yeah david uh you know who's who's gonna be superman next year uh, oh that's right that's him isn't it yeah okay. he's one of the guys in um in anthony ramos's crew mm-hmm. um he kind of really only gets like one big scene that's not i mean it's not that big in in terms of uh movies about tornadoes but uh yeah. but yeah so it was like weird like i don't know exactly when they shot that well, of course i mean probably didn't know quite then but it's just so funny and like katie o'brien too it seems like with like love lies bleeding like like she's sort of on a trajectory to maybe do even more leading stuff so it was kind of right. funny to see her like a more supporting thing but again like these sort of movies, like they've all, like, again, I say these sort of movies, these two movies right. have had like those deep <laughs> bench, you know, of, of actors who, um, 
this is sort of the meeting ground i feel like you yeah. know where it's like you know they're all they're all kind of the same in that car so oh, yeah. uh, fun fun faces for sure yeah and uh i didn't realize he was also the projectionist in pearl uh which yes. i just recently rewatched <laughs> too jesus yeah um and then finally anthony ramos uh, I thought he he carried it well as kind of the he sort of became kind of the third wheel character. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's an interesting kind of change up in it. Well, we'll talk about in spoilers. Yes. But yes. uh, but yeah, overall, really like the cast. Really like the movie. Honestly, talking about it and thinking about it, like I am more. I feel like I am more inclined to go rewatch Twisters in the theater this week rather than see Deadpool and Wolverine, honestly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I probably would too if I didn't have to write about, you know, Deadpool. Yep. Um, this is another one, excuse me, um, I always stump for not only IMAX, I know people are probably uh, fatigued by hearing mm-hmm. this, see it on the largest screen possible, but this is another yeah. one that, again, it does look tremendous. Yep. Like, they, they shot this on film, which I didn't realize until our, our colleague Nick Rogers told me mm-hmm. um, that. But... Um, so it looks wonderful, but the sound design is, is it's really incredible. You know, it's it's awesome, and you'll get more of that, like in yeah. in, in IMAX. The prologue um, in this especially is is really harrowing, and like you really you get that impact. That's the other kind of weird. It's like it's kind of unfair because I didn't see Twister in the theaters, mm. so it's a yeah. totally different experience. You know, if you of course rewatch it, um, pretty much anywhere else, it's like you know it just doesn't quite have that impact so yeah. I, I would be lying oh, if yeah. i said um you know that 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 helps that you know having seen twisters in the theater as a first impression that helps so yep um so anyway if you can give yourself the best first impression if you do have any kind of <laughs> uh a premium format uh theater I, I this is one you will not regret it i think right don't see deadpool in 3d spend yeah. your uh, no. spend your up, up charge seeing this and yeah you know uh imax or 40x or whatever you have i <laughs> um so i don't go to regal but i know 40x exists where they move the chairs around they spray water on you and do all of this stuff um i've never gone to one but i did see a tiktok that was like two people (laughs) sitting in their seats before the movie and one says to the other like do you think we'll get wet and then the other says like well it depends on how much you like glenn powell and i really (laughs) like glenn powell (laughs) yeah and i'm like i mean there you go "Eh, yeah there you go Um, i mean he he gets he gets wet (laughs) he does yeah that uh, shot from the trailer is amazing yeah Uh, him in the white shirt i mean it's weird because like obviously like if you go if you dig deep into like reddit and tiktok like there's a lot of like of like internet sleuths saying like is that did they actually make that matt hurt from the obsessive viewer for a <laughs> scene and not they're, Glenn they're, Powell? They're, they're combing through it frame by frame yeah it's so weird you know and i'm just yeah i'm just like come on man <laughs> like i i have a life too quit doxing me sydney sweeney yeah. if you want to call me that's fine um but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, do you want to go that's into right. spoilers? He was in uh, anyone but you. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, See, I shouldn't yeah. like this guy. <laughs> right. I should be mad at him. <laughs> yeah. As I'm still a fan. Should that's, we all? <laughs> that's yeah. That, that's yes. how. That's how you know. Yep. Loyal. Yep. Uh, Glenn Powell. Anyway, uh, do you want to go into spoilers for Twisters? Yeah. All great. right. Actually, before we do that, what was your rating? And is it going to be on your top 10? Do you think? Um, yeah. Where did you where did you rate it on a scale of five stars? I, I gave it a three and a half. I the, nice. the thing I would say in terms of the ceiling for me is I'm just not a huge disaster movie guy. We talked I mm. mentioned uh, Volcano, Dante's Peak, you know, Deep Impact, Armageddon. I don't know what it is with these uh, twin doppelganger yep. disaster movies in the 90s as this whole thing. But twins. it's not a we got twins. It's, it's twins. There you go. That's probably why. And those movies were after uh, Twisters. So they were probably like, uh, I don't Twister, Night of the Twisters. Anyway, so yep. all to say, I'm just like, I, it, it's kind of the ceiling for me. Like this, like even during like the climactic, like the, the big holy crap, like tornado, I was kind of like, I can feel like we're closing in on two hours. Like yeah. I'm just, I'm good. Like I sort of get it. Yeah. Um, Much so like this podcast. Of the, uh, <laughs> right, yeah. like, oh, two hours. Um, so it's that that was that's sort of the ceiling for me. But mm-hmm. I think if like I don't know if you're looking for like an excuse for like an action movie, like you know, eighty million dollars worth of people did last weekend. If they're looking for yep. like just 
something where maybe you saw Twister once in the 90s and you don't need any other things. You don't have to see seven other Marvel movies to catch up with it. Right. Um, you know, if you're just looking for, again, you know, just like a fun escapist action movie, I think this is definitely one of the better ones that I've seen this year. So same here. Yeah. Same here. I also rated it three and a half stars. I, I would be curious to see um, if that goes up on repeat viewings because kind of my, my, uh, to kind of, to kind of borrow your, uh, your analogy, my, the floor for me for like, in terms of like top 10 list for the year is usually in a, in a good year, every movie in my top 10 will be four and a half out of five stars. Um, hmm. but on a particularly bad year or what have you, like four is like the minimum rating that I would give for movies that would be in contention for top 10. Um, and so having twisters at three and a half stars, not that the star rating is, it, it's ultimately meaningless, you know, who cares, but <laughs> I could see that bumping up, um, on repeat viewings. Cause it's one of the only movies this year that I feel really compelled to go rewatch it in the theater. Um, so we'll see if that happens. Um, yeah, but what you guys will see happening in your podcast app is us going into spoilers for twisters. <laughs> so gonna see it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. See it with your ear holes. Um, we are going to go in unless you're watching on YouTube. If I ever post the videos on YouTube again. Um, so yeah. Hi YouTube. Anyway. So, um, ov podcasts on youtube so we're going to go into spoilers for twisters uh i'm going to play a clip from the trailer so if you want to if you want to avoid that go check the show notes or for for timestamps. those can be found at obsessiveviewer.com slash uh ov435 uh so i'm gonna play a clip from the trailer when we come back we're going to be spoiling twisters Tyler Owens he calls himself the Tornado Wrangler. If you feel it, chase it! I said if you feel it, chase it! Alright, here we go. go. Oh, she's perfect! She's gorgeous! You thought you could destroy a tornado. We never had a chance. You want one? Okay, so spoilers on for Twisters. Uh, so, Brent, the first thing I want to mention, uh, really up top, I want to get this out of the way because I don't understand why this happened at the end of the movie. <laughs> Paul Shear's cameo. <laughs> what yeah. was that? <laughs> like... I was thinking for a second, I was like, was he in the first one, like as a kid? Because he would have been, <laughs> Paul Shear's probably, what, in his mid-40s or something? Yeah. So he would have been, twenty, you know, like, whatever, he would have been like a teenager. So I was like, because, you know, again, there's a lot of people in Twister. So I'm like, yeah. maybe I missed this face somewhere. I don't know. Um so I, I know I'm as clueless as you. I don't yeah. understand really. I was trying to think like, was he in, was he in Minari somewhere too? Like, is there a connection to <laughs> Lee Isaac Chung? Um, but uh, like a couple of things about that. One is just a kind of gripe about, you know, the modern era of uh, film discourse and clickbait headlines and stuff. Um, a certain website, I'm not going to say what it is, has an article with the uh, with the title "Paul Shears Twisters Cameo Explained," um, and it's not explained. Okay, I already know what website it is. I won't mention it. Yep, but. yep. Uh, I don't want to go on like a rant or anything here. Um, but when, after I screened uh, Twisters, I um, <laughs> anyway, um, th it does not explain it. It basically boils down to, yeah, we don't know why it is. We don't know why why he has a cameo, but here's like some information about Paul Shear and how like, <laughs> you know, he does podcasts and stuff and he was on the lead. He's on like, Letterboxd. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, but I did find it pretty funny, though, that there is a red carpet interview with Shear where uh, it's at the premiere of Twisters and he says, uh, I don't have it to pull up here for you not to hear, uh, but for the audience to hear, but... He basically says like, you know, and it's so funny that I actually bought this for like a second. Um, he's like, you know, what 
people don't realize is I'm actually the only legacy character from the original movie. Um, my mother was a background actor and she was pregnant with me during it. <laughs> and then, uh, and he's like, so I'm, I'm actually in, in the movie. And like one of the comments was like, you look pretty good for being like 28. <laughs> 28. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was, it was pretty funny. I thought that was, that was a fun, uh, a fun joke, but yeah, it was, it was random, not distracting or anything. It was just like such a weird thing. And in that same respect, I feel like as much as I loved Maura Tierney in this, I feel like th the way that she's introduced is like so weirdly, deceptively, like as if it's a big cameo. It's going to be Helen Hunt. Yeah. That's what, I was, that's what I was thinking during the movie. Yeah. Because there are two different times where they talk about her mom mm -hmm. and her mom. And you know that she's going to have that Vienna moment. From, I call it that from 13 going on 30. Mm -hmm. Where it's like she goes back home and she, you know, gets out of the city and the hustle and bustle and, you know, goes back home and all that. And, uh, and yeah, I was like 90% positive. Yeah. Again, not having... I haven't read any articles before the movie or, sure. or, or, or anything. I was like, it's probably going to be Helen Hunt, right? Um, not. So fine. Yeah. But that you're but then you're right. It's like, why why uh, yeah. conceal her in shadow? Why like it's it was so weird. And like she was Nick Fury, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. It's bizarre and 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 they do I feel like they do like foreshadow her presence yes. in it in a way where I was just like, oh, it's sort of it's just like odd yeah but, but i'm yeah. glad that it wasn't helen hunt either because then like during it i was like oh god are they gonna are they gonna are they gonna have like have established like i was assuming that helen hunt was gonna be her mother but i was like mm -hmm. well they call her like mrs carter or something and it's like are they are they gonna retroactively kill off bill paxton's character <laughs> in this like is that like yeah. what the hell um so I I'm think that was one that. of the things you mentioned it. That's like one of the things I like about this is that it's almost just like a remix of the first one. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. like you're basically dealing with the same general elements, but mm -hmm. you're just putting it like you're modernizing it in some ways. You're yeah. dealing with different characters, but like it's not this thing of like we need to pass the torch to the next right. tornado watchers. Like, no, it's just it's just this is a fun premise. Let's do it again. Yes, you know, like, exactly. You know, and I found that really refreshing. Again, in like an era where we are with where everything has to be interconnected and you had to have seen, mm -hmm. the, you know, two miniseries and the, 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 the one movie from, you know, 20 years ago and then the one movie from six years ago. It's like, it's like, no, they just they like chasing tornadoes they, and you'll learn why in exactly. this two hour block, which is what movies used to be. You learn things in the yes. allotted time and then you can forget it if you want to. Absolutely. Uh, like like so. listening to this podcast. Um, <laughs> you never have to think about it again. Never have to think about it again. <laughs> Please join Patreon, though. Um, yeah. But no, it it's. It, it is very refreshing and like the little anecdotes and the little Easter eggs and stuff like, I mean, something as simple as like Dorothy five at the beginning mm -hmm. of the movie, like the fact that they made it Dorothy five since the first one had four of them. This is Dorothy five. And it doesn't go into any exp explanation about why, like what, like what it is. It's just there. It's just like, that's what I want, especially out of this type of movie, this type of like summer blockbuster disaster movie. Like we don't need intricate interconnected like legacy characters bringing coming back into the fold that it feels like it uh, that would be f that would feel so uh, um contrived and and just uh, sticking out like a sore thumb we didn't need that and we didn't get it and i'm happy for it so yeah it, it's the idea that you could be sentimental for the movie itself and not be sentimental for the characters yes because, like, you're sentimental for Twister, like, the movie. You have mm -hmm. good memories around it. it. It came out at a time, like, you were really amped up. You, you know, really interested in tornado watching, all this stuff. And yeah. it hit for you. But you're not like, oh, my God, if you don't bring back Helen Hunt, you're going to ruin my childhood. Right. And I yeah. think that's kind of where we've gotten with a lot of this, a, a lot of types of fandom where yeah. it's like, you know, and I think that's sometimes what they fundamentally, like, misunderstand. Um, you know, just about, yeah, just about certain kind of IPs. It's like, yeah, I, I've said that about Ghostbusters quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen Frozen Kingdom yet. Um, it's on Me Netflix, neither. so I don't know. I'm not really particularly excited for it. But I, that's like one of those like examples to me where it's like that movie itself, that is not a wistful movie. People mm -hmm. have 
good feelings attached to it because it was a really fun and clever movie like in, in 1984 and has like a legacy and like all of this stuff. But like, that's been the weird thing to me watching with afterlife and um, what it seems like frozen kingdom has where it's like, it's all mm-hmm. about family now. It's like ghostbusters is like the most, not the most, but it's, it's, it's a dyspeptic. It's about four yeah. guys in New York, like trying to make a buck. Like it's, yeah. you know, it is not a warm and fuzzy movie. So right. anyway, all that to say is when it relates to twister and twisters. I like mm-hmm. that. It's, um, you know, it, 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 Twister shouldn't be sentimental about the characters. It, exactly. And, <laughs> no. so, yeah. And something I really liked about it, we can, we can dig into the plot a little bit deeper here. Uh, I want to touch on how, and I don't know if this is necessarily like a Lee Isaac Chung thing, just because I've, did he only do Minari or has he done other stuff? I think he's only done Minari in terms of features. Okay. So, yeah. so I feel like, and it's been a while since I've seen Minari, I've loved it, but I just, I don't really remember much about it. But in terms of the drama, like, I do wish that there was more of like that family drama here in, in Twisters, but the thing that I really appreciate and think is really interesting, and and it's the second part of the movie that really hooked me into it, was the reveal that Anthony Ramos's character and his team are working with this shady developer guy who is using the data specifically to just like like get land that's been decimated by storms for a fraction of the price because they're uninsured or or low low income low insured uh underinsured um properties that he can come in and like pay pennies on the dollar and get development deal like a uh uh get it redeveloped and everything and make a killing off of it that like in terms of like a I don't know if I would say like socioeconomic standpoint, but it feels like it's close to the kind of general vibe of Minari in the in the sense of like a struggling family, struggling with income and and struggling to eke out a living. Um, like I like that that was incorporated into this movie and was a driving force for the drama. And it made a very compelling, it, it gave Daisy Edgar Jones's character a compelling reason to to effectively switch sides and and work with with Tyler Owens. Um I thought that was just I think I think in terms of the plotting it was really good. I I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean for me I think it just kind of points to a more sophisticated storytelling that I might I don't want to say turn people off but they'll maybe feel like like this is a tornado movie. I don't want to lecture about, you know, yeah. so, I don't know. For me, it works because I think they do just enough of it. And in that, like pretty much same stretch of the movie, you realize that, okay, Tyler is a douchebag YouTuber. Mm-hmm. And he has a million pin, all this stuff, but he's like raising money or he, he yeah. he's using that money basically to give back mm-hmm. um, to, you know, to people in the area and basically giving them, like, you know, food and, like, supplies and stuff to yeah. these things. And so that's kind of where she has, like you said, that kind of turn. Mm-hmm. And uh, that kind of all plays. Yeah. Like, it, it, it worked for me. I believe that with the characters, you look at Anthony Ramos' character, after that, you know, prologue, you know, they, uh, Daisy R. Jones and, and Anthony Ramos, they go their separate ways. Mm-hmm. He's in the military. He learns about, you know, and they say, they set this up in the beginning. He learns about radar. Mm-hmm. He, you know, starts this this team where they're able to basically 3d you know model these tornadoes and like he's doing things that will help hopefully help people yeah but money screws everything up and they get money bags along for the ride mm-hmm. he's financing their company but like you said he's he, he's profiteering off of the these families for you know pennies on dollar for their land so mm-hmm. i get those are things for me that i liked because i think I get where people would say, like, I don't care about any of that. I understand. But I think there was enough of that in this movie where it just gave me that little extra, like, push with the characters, that little, like, extra step of of depth that uh, I really did like. Because I don't, again, with Twister, I mean, you're you're not getting that sort of thing. They're, they're yeah. not going after that level of storytelling, which is totally fine. Um, I don't think you necessarily need it. And I wouldn't know that I would need it going into this. But right. um, I'm glad it was... I'm glad it was there. It just, it, it helped me um, sink my teeth in a little bit more uh, with characters again, especially for me, like someone that doesn't really always, that doesn't always get caught up in the spectacle right. um, of disaster movies. So it was just good to have some, some kind of um, human folks to hang on to. 
Yeah, and it was a good. It, it provided good texture for the drama too, because it's not just like two competing teams of of storm chasers. One is one is a thief of an idea, and the other is like more just more passionate about it. It it gives a deeper kind of context to it, and also it really helps kind of uh, prop up this whole idea of disrupting a tornado and like doing the what the science stuff to basically make a tornado disappear. Um, it really gives a, a deeper context to that or, or it really props it up a lot more to give that final set piece a big, like a big closing finish. Whereas like in, in the original it was, I mean, it was getting Dorothy in the air, getting, getting the data and everything, which could be, potentially lead to them being able to uh to like add a few minutes to the warning to the warning sirens and stuff yeah to track um, them better but yeah. yeah but yeah i like that this and as a sequel it kind of ups the idea that it's like we're gonna dissipate this thing we're gonna yeah. fire n- n- silver nitrate rockets at it right. or whatever um but it's like hey if you could do it you know and you could save you know all these you know people and yep. you know their city and all this stuff that keeps getting <laughs> you know banged up with this stuff it's 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 a good it's it's a good it's a good aim for the you know yeah. protagonist it's a good journey for them so oh, yeah. yeah yeah and giving uh giving like as much as i kind of did at some points wish that the whole like ptsd of it all with kate uh, like her being like her her not being able to really uh to her freezing in the moment and not being able to really do it have that be like her finally like breaking free of that and going after the final tornado so that she can she can save the save the town and everything that's that's good like big picture like big like blockbuster stuff but it also um i don't know i don't know where i was going with that i kind of feel like it was a little bit uh, I, I, I don't, don't think I needed that with me her. Neither. Not, not the. I mean, the the prologue is great. Yeah, and I'm not saying she shouldn't have like any residual effects from that. Sure, but like you know, they have like the third satellite and they can't quite set it up because yeah. she's you know basically I don't know if it's like a panic attack or she Frozen. just like can't if she froze or she just yeah. she can't help with it and then yeah anyway so i i thought that was a little belabored but you yeah know, i did whatever again it's a product of this time I and mean, yeah so much of so many movies like we've talked we talk mm-hmm. about trends it's like that is such a a lot in horror especially but yeah. even in like mainstream stuff i i have no you know problem with uh you know uh, destigmatizing mental health and all of these mm-hmm. things i mean that's great but it's like you know you sort of feel like y- you're kind of just like it's okay for to, to leave that in the past a little bit and just yeah. sort of kind of move on I, with the movie. I didn't need <laughs> it know? to be so much of a defining thing about her arc throughout it. Yes. I kind of, because yes. there's so many other elements to the movie that I kind of wish that her having to overcome this, this, this trauma from her past, I feel like that, I mean, that can be something that is like like Helen Hunt's uh, arc in the first movie. Like it, right. it could have been something a little bit more subtle. Um, and like, it just reminds me of like the, the line from Maxine where it's like, like at numerous points in this movie, it's like Daisy Edgar Jones, like pauses and, and, and through her draw or through her trauma, she addresses the camera. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, and that's just the, th- you know, that w- it's not that no one was traumatized in movies right. in 96, but it's just like, you know i don't know it's, yeah it's such a funny thing it's it's that it's like anything in uh anything we have parasocial relationships anything that mm-hmm. is you know that is out there and in terms of entertainment it's like you don't want to like bury it but yeah. you also don't want to be faced with it so much that it's not even escapist anymore right yeah <laughs> that's, I mean, that's not an eloquent way of saying that but it, and i think that's like that's i think kind of where filmmakers kind of are right now with that whole like trauma aspect is mm-hmm. it's just like i don't know i don't want to say like oh they can't do that and or whatever right. but it's at the same time it's sort of like i don't know i like, feel like there's could, maybe other ways of doing yeah it. <laughs> more nuanced approaches like that sure. like that's something that should and can be handled a lot a lot better in terms of really diving into the character and really diving into the like what is going through this character but 
it's it's something that happens so often in movies these days that it can be as well intentioned and as well meaning as possible on the part of the filmmaker, but oftentimes these days it feels like they're checking a box. It feels like right. they're they need to address like this because that's the it's like it's like the Michael Scott thing in uh in the office uh, when he's in improv class. It's like okay, we need to give this character drama because where do you go from there? Or we need to give this character trauma. Where do you go from there? You nowhere. <laughs> it's the most dramatic thing. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. You can't prop you can't stop that. Yeah. yeah. So like so like, hey, it looks like it's gonna rain. My boyfriend and my friends died while chasing a tornado and I was the only survivor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It well. is like the gun in the scene in an improv. It's just, yes. that's hardy. It's a, you can't top that yeah yeah, yeah. I, I it's just like you know and again like i don't mean to be too facetious about it again yeah, i'm neither. like cool with you know like you know tell the stories you want to tell but like i don't know that like i think we can release like the garfield movie without like garfield like experiencing yeah. his first anxiety attack like i think we exactly. can i think we can like i think we can anyway I'm, yeah and, and i won't go too far down that path but anyway yeah. all that to say uh and i mean yeah, i agree with you i don't yeah. think that needed to really be here i think there was enough stuff um i think a lot of the storytelling actually is especially for like like it's a tornado movie like yeah. it's, i don't I come into this expecting like it's it's a pretty silly premise as yeah. is. so like i don't need anything super uh super deep but yeah. uh, but i appreciate some of the extra steps they took yeah same here same here um the set pieces i thought were really cool that that whole pool sequence oh i forgot to mention uh well i didn't forget to mention because i haven't brought it up yet but um the the part where they're where they're trapped in the pool like that is great i thought that was mm -hmm. really thrilling also the guy in the motel room or in in the in the lobby who is uh who's <laughs> who's being just an ass to the guy as the storm is coming and everything that is bill paxton's son um oh okay yeah i read somewhere they had a cameo but i didn't check which one he was yeah so, i i yeah. read that and i was like that's that's pretty awesome i love that i love that kind of thing too yeah that's that uh, good good for them yeah. yeah that was that was a goofy thing it's like oh they always play those storm warnings don't worry about that yeah <laughs> you sure <laughs> yeah but right. i know that's the point is that he's supposed to be a dick so anyway yeah, yeah yeah and then the movie theater scene i thought that was a good kind of echo or callback to the drive-in scene although i guess in this movie the rodeo is probably the equivalent of the drive-in scene um yeah but just the fact that there was a classic horror movie playing in this movie that's while, a frankenstein yeah, yeah just really great really great um yeah, yeah. Uh, what else can we talk about with this movie? Um, storms. <laughs> storms on the horizon. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, i I think it. I think it works. Again, I think in terms of it as like a legacy sequel, I mm -hmm. I like that this made like a, a good chunk of change, and we'll yeah. see how it does against you know Deadpool or whatever. But sure. um, you know, I think the. In a way, and I almost hate to say that, that like, oh, Legacy yeah. is equal, made, you know, we had a huge opening weekend. It's like, well, what it learned there, maybe not right. great. And what lessons are like the ones it's like, I hope the takeaway is we can do legacy sequels and they don't have to have all this like, this like studious fan service yeah. and we have to treat it with such reverence. I think we can just say, hey, this was a fun idea 30 years ago. Let's just try it again. Right. And, and, and do, but do it like a movie in 2024, like just throw what you got at it. We right. have one pal now, throw him it, at it. Exactly. You know, it's like we have cool effects that look better than 96, just because that's the way technology works. Sure. Let's do that. Um, you know, <laughs> so like that, that I hope are the lessons that are taken away and not like we just, of course, need to remake everything ever. Although, right. you know, it would, this movie wouldn't even need to be the one that would you know have them green light sequels but uh right <laughs> but yeah all that to say i'm glad this is i guess the kind of movie that um that did well if you're like this is a i think a legacy sequel done right so i agree um, yeah I, I yeah i liked it more than i expected <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i liked it too um would you want to see a third twister movie a twisters is this yeah twin twisters is probably would yeah. be called um yes. I mean, sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know, I, at that point, is it, 
you know, something that's, you know, a few years down the road, I, mm. I don't really know. Um, again, we'll see kind of what the takeaway is yeah. um, in terms of what they want to do. But uh, I probably would. I don't yeah. care about like, like, oh, my God, there's like, you know, there's twisters in New York City. Like, right. That's one yeah. thing I like about this, too, is they didn't amp it that way. It's like it's still in Oklahoma. It's still in the, you know, Grand right. Great Plains, I, I think is twi- where Twister is. But like in mm. Twisters, they make yeah. the point that it's it's definitely in Oklahoma. So I like that it's like, uh, God, they're not doing it. It's not like Day After Tomorrow or something right. where it's like, you know, crazy, like plowing through cities or, or mm-hmm. whatever. Because that's not the point. I, for me, anyway, it's like, yeah, that's not really the point. It's it's that they're out. It's it's kind of a Western, really. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Um, in, in a lot of ways. So. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. I probably would, though. Yeah. Same. <laughs> same here. And another th- another like small detail uh, not even really small detail really but um something that i really kind of i guess appreciated about it um is that like i remember like in in 96 when i saw the first one like i remember being like turned off a little bit by any time someone referred to the the fujita scale as ef one ef2 ef3 because in twister they just say f1 f2 f3 f4 i like that they corrected that in this one that it's ef so it is like meteorologically accurate as far as i can tell so um, quite a bit of science in this movie and i like glenn powell's little thing thing Mm. about like well ef it's it refers to the amount of damage yes um you know and like that's that's a cool again like that's that's pretty clever yeah screenwriting and again it's like it's like this movie wouldn't have to do that, but mm-hmm. like it had better writing than it needed to. It has like moments like that of, of poignancy that do work for the characters yeah. where again, you wouldn't, you know, you could have a des- disaster movie without those, but I just, right. I like that they did. Same here. And like, I don't know if I saw this or this is just something I've thought of when, uh, cause in, in context, we're recording this a few days after, uh, Biden dropped out of the re-election campaign and everything. Won't talk about that, but I had seen a lot of people online saying, <laughs> like, like doing like fake texts, texts to presumably to exes, saying like, "Hey, so Biden dropping out really, uh, really got me thinking about how we dropped out of each other's lives, and maybe <laughs> yeah. we should, <laughs> yeah." But I saw a similar one for events that may have happened the previous weekend that we also don't have to talk about. Oh yes, I feel like yes. we're in the middle of like, uh political twisters yes the most historic 2024 (laughs) yeah i i saw uh someone had posted something like we are living the we are living the hardest uh history exam questions in 2060 history of like yeah yeah 2050 something yeah Yeah, exactly so great but anyway yeah yeah the the point i was gonna make is that i just like imagine like uh people texting x's being like you know the EF scale for tornadoes is that it's how much damage they do. And I think I'm done having you damage me or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And EF five or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Anyway. Um, yeah. So anything else on twisters or should we close it up? Should we, I should we uh... take the, whatever the nitrate stuff is and, 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 throw it into the spinning yeah, whatever vortex. they end up doing to yes uh, all the barrels of whatever crap and then the <laughs> rockets we can yes. i think we can we can shoot it <laughs> okay let's do it um so uh so yeah let me just send a quick text like much like glenn Powell shot his <laughs> rockets into the tornado i want to shoot my shot here <laughs> yeah, right. um uh please respond sydney sweeney um so okay that's our review for twisters um we both rated it three and a half uh, stars out of five i i could see that going up for me upon revisiting it um so we'll see see how that goes um so we're going to close out this review and then go into our secondary review. It'll probably probably be a brief non-spoiler review of fly me to the moon. But before we do that, Brent, where can people find you in case they're avoiding our fly me to the moon review where they can, where can they find you? Online? <laughs> in case they don't want to, don't want to hear that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Uh, all my stuff can be found at, uh, awake in the dark.com. I'm on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Letterboxd, uh, blue sky, uh, threads. And I say Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I, think you did yeah and your truth truth social also 
I, always, <laughs> always truth social. I yes. try to really get as many retruths as possible <laughs> on Jesus that. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's how I lovely. roll. Nice. Well, links to all that is in the show notes. Uh, let us know what you thought of Twisters. Uh, we're going to go into our secondary review. But first, I just want to say before we get to that secondary review, I want to take a quick moment to remind you that if you like the show, please take a moment to follow us on social media and subscribe to and rate the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, or whatever your preferred podcast app is. And don't forget to subscribe to the Obsessive Viewer Podcast's YouTube channel as well, where I'm posting more and more videos, sort of, um, and live streams of podcasts. Uh, and also, if you're interested in starting a podcast of your own, you can go to Libsyn and use promo code obsess when you sign up for a new account you'll get up to two months free depending on when you sign up during the month and we'll get a commission on it as well so more details on that are in the show notes of the episode uh i've been using Libsyn for 11 years now uh and it's never failed me for three podcasts it's incredible uh so check that out Libsyn.com. Uh, use promo code obsess and now back to the show they tell me i view obsessively Lift off. We have lift off. You must be the launch director. You're the killer from Manhattan. Change plans. Now that we know the whole world will be watching, we need backup of the moon landing. You mean to fake it? What? No one can ever know what we're doing. I cannot accept that. They will shoot you. What is my budget? All right, so our secondary review this evening is for Fly Me to the Moon, which is in theaters and will eventually land on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, it was released in theaters on July 12th, 2024, and the premise, according to IMDb, is marketing maven Kelly Jones wreaks havoc on launch director Cole Davis's already difficult task. When the White House deems the mission too important to fail, the countdown truly begins. Uh, director for this movie was Greg Berlanti, and the writer was Rose Gilroy, with story by credits by Keenan Flynn and Bill Kirsten. Uh, and the cast includes Scarlett Johansson, Channing Tatum, Woody Harrelson, Ray Romano, Jim Rash, and Anna Garcia. Brent, we're going to do a non-spoiler review for uh, Fly Me to the Moon. So let's talk uh, opening credits, like the the very first shot of the movie in oh my God, incredible detail. Oh my God, we need to detail. talk about every scene. <laughs> yes, we need to talk about every scene. But every scene. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, what did you think of Fly Me to the Moon? Um, yeah. I, I enjoyed it overall. I think I snarkly, I don't think I, I don't know if I put this in my review, but uh it it remind it, it's like a green book version of first man oh my um, god that's brilliant <laughs> fuck <and> it's just <laughs> it's like and and you know i know people have like really strong feelings about green book i don't mm -hmm. like that movie either but like yeah. in terms of what this movie is going for like it is very like very minimal stakes it is not to test your you know it, it is not a it is not a really like provocative movie it's meant to right. be very kind of um you know just like low stakes um of course first man it being uh you know about the the moon landing and all that sort of thing whereas yeah. you know first man of course like a lot more uh dramatic uh like higher stakes all that sort of thing so yeah. anyway all that to say um yeah this is a very pleasant movie it's sort of a fun uh romp it, it's it's interesting because um a couple things i noted in my review uh one is that uh jason bateman was originally slated to direct this oh and, wow uh and dropped out i think pr pretty early in the process just hmm. a, a real not quote-unquote creative differences but like this is a totally different movie if he directs it oh, based totally. on things that he's directed and just what i think to be like his general sensibilities this would have been a way darker story way more cynical i would imagine yeah uh whereas what we get with uh greg berlanti berlanti i think berlanti i think berlanti, um yeah. you're getting something way more you're getting a lot of um doo-wop needle uh needle yeah. drops a lot of very breezy quick editing and that's fine that's great it's just a very different movie and that's totally fine um so that was one thing that's kind of an interesting sort of what if and then uh chris evans was in talks uh to oh, play interesting um to play the shannon tatum role um evans and 
Johansson have really good chemistry and things I've seen them in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to gather that that was either a scheduling thing for Evans mm-hmm. or he might have been too expensive with ScarJo. Yeah. Yeah. And that's they maybe true. Had to, like pick one or the other. Um, but man, not that sure. would have been so good. Know. Yeah, yeah, it's you can already kind of see like Chris Evans in this role. I mean, that is not a, that is not a stretch, right? So those are two things I think were just kind of interesting. That's not the movie that ended up happening. Yeah, um, I think what we get here is very, again, it's there's it it's like moms are gonna freaking love this. Whenever, oh yeah, whenever it does come to um like Apple TV Plus, mm. which would probably be like this fall if I had to guess, like. Yeah. It'll probably like do very well in streaming. And I don't think this is the kind of movie that people are really itching to go out. And I don't think it did well because it came out earlier this. Yeah. Um, well, it came out. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it did box office wise, but I don't think this is the movie that's like really getting people like um, like gung ho um, right. to see it. But I think this is one of those ones that's going to play very well on streamers. I guess that's kind yeah. of a backhanded compliment. But, sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think you. I think you generally know what you're getting uh, with this. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's it's pleasant enough. I think um, I think Johansson especially. It, this is a um, she's definitely doing a like she's really trying to do uh, put as much of her star power kind of out there. Yeah, um, I she was like promoting this like a good bit, which you know like. I don't want to say she wouldn't have to, and I mean, I'm sure it's, it's sure. Sony is the one that's like pushing that, of course, it's not just out of the goodness of her heart, but yeah. um, <laughs> I think it is that sort of thing we talk about star power with like Len Powell, like where it's, yes, it's a good performance, but she's also really trying to like, I think she's a producer on the movie, and I think she's mm-hmm. really trying to um, put the best foot forward, so yeah, um, so I, I, I appreciate all that. Um, it's uh Past that, I don't think anyone is going to claim that this is some masterpiece. No. Um, it goes yeah. down very easy. Mm-hmm. Um, that, so it's, that's it. <laughs> it's one of those, like... And by the way, the opening weekend box office, uh, if I'm reading this right, was $9 million. Um, And to date, it's had a worldwide box office of $31 million. I don't know what the budget was or anything, but... Um, I think it was like 100 so I mean... Okay. You know, I, yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> but see but, I don't know what the back end deal is with like Apple. Like I don't yeah. know. That's what this weird thing with like um with Apple doing stuff like later. Like I don't know yeah. what the figures add up with. That's a whole other conversation. Oh yeah. That that's a whole other can of worms. But uh this movie I I enjoyed it well enough. Like I think that that uh comparison of Green Book and uh Green Book how did you phrase it? Like first man, yeah, just first man, yeah. the, you know, or Apollo 11, I guess, if you like, if, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, that is that is such an apt uh comparison because it is in that realm of like that kind of like sanitized historical drama comedy, um, atmosphere. Like, it reminds me of movies like, um, honestly like movies like remember the titans or um hidden figures or i was gonna say hidden figures is probably one i should have said because that's actually space related too yeah um, and it has glenn but... powell um <laughs> there you yeah. go. Oh, wow okay yeah i think it does yeah. um it probably yeah. does isn't he's probably one of the astronauts right yep uh maybe he's one of the hidden figures um <laughs> yeah he was just waiting he was waiting in the wings he yep. knew that uh <laughs> Tom was going to find him, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, he played John Glenn. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, but yeah, and I I don't have, on the surface, I don't have any problem with that type of movie. Like, that is a perfectly fine, like, like my cynical viewpoint of it is it's the type of movie that is made in earnest to try to capitalize on mass audiences to get maybe some award steam going. Like it is that type of like award fodder uh, thing that if, if it is done right, the best you can say for it is it's going to be a glossy fun sort of movie that you're not really, like you said, you're not going to call it a masterpiece. Um, So, having said that, I would be in a position to kind of almost dislike this movie, but I love space. I love NASA. I love the history. 
And like, there are parts of this movie, like about Apollo 11, where like a simple scene of like them being put into the car to be transported over to, to the platform for, for this shuttle. Um, a quick shot of uh, people uh, directing like the big, huge things that are carrying parts of the shuttle um, that like, that's, it's like frame to frame, like exactly how it was based on like the Apollo 11 documentary and even further back, the documentary for all mankind, like the Mm -hmm. footage is like ingrained in my mind. And I'm like, yeah, that's photo. Like that is frame to frame exactly how it, how it looked. And like those little like attention, like bits of attention to detail, like made my heart swell a little bit because it is, as it's said in the movie, it is a monumental huge it's like it's it's such an it still blows my mind that humanity did this and like and like i i got like this wistful thought in my head that like throughout the movie i was like it fucking sucks that i wasn't alive when that happened like <laughs> like we don't have something quite like that there's there's nothing in history like that um no. much less since then that you can point to and be like oh yeah we watched people walk on the moon live um so yeah so so i just have this affinity for this movie for that reason or that part of the movie um the other thing i i was pleasantly surprised by is that the trailer like i'm gonna say something that i usually say the opposite of but the trailer was misleading in that the trailer made it look like the majority of the movie was focused on recreating or creating the um uh the the contingency filmed uh uh, uh moon landing um and that's a big pivotal part of the movie but it's not as pivotal as you would think it's like the la- the back half of the movie but it's more about like the relationship between Scarlett Johansson and Channing Tatum that and it's that kind of cookie clutter, but uh, cookie cutter, but like glossy sort of like romantic uh, spark of like, oh, she lies for a living because she's in PR and he wants to tell the truth. And that's how they clash and everything. But as they get deeper into the characters and his relation to like Apollo 1, the Apollo 1 tragedy, it it gets a little bit more deep than movies like this tend to go. And I really appreciated that about it. So. Yeah, and it's it's the it's, it's the kind of concept of like, well, you can have like the smartest people in the world, but you need to be able to pitch this to the American people, yes. to Congress. That's what a lot of this movie is, is basically kind of stumping for it, which is sort of interesting, I think, even in an election, especially in an election year. Right. Uh, the idea that like you could have a very uh, qualified, you know, uh, you know, candidate, let's say, like, for instance, but like if, mm-hmm. if you don't have the funding, you don't have like all of that sort of backing, you're, you're not going to get to where you want to go. Yeah. Um, so, and then or and if that's, they're in their eighties. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that idea that it's like, you know, they, they want the same thing, but of course their ways of going about it yeah. are very different. They're coming from two different camps, all that sort of yeah. thing. Um, so yeah. And I, you know, it's, it's not a dig against uh, Channing Tatum. I do, I do think he is yeah. a uh, good actor. Aubrey had mm-hmm. said um, like coming out of this, my wife, that, you know, it's funny because he doesn't really have that quite wholesome persona to to her, at least, because mm-hmm. he's Magic Mike. Ah, and okay. So that's kind of her. That's kind of the way that I, I've seen him in a lot of other sure. I, these amount of things. I kind of I don't necessarily tie him directly to that. Always first, necessarily. Sure. Um, I think he still ha- he still has like the pretty clean cut all American sort of thing. He has yeah. the gumption. Like I still bought him. I just didn't think. I didn't know the Chris Evans thing, thing until after. Yeah. But um, I, in retrospect, you, you kind of like go back and you're like, oh my God, I could totally see that. Totally. And it would have worked better. Yeah. Um, I think like they have like fine chemistry. I think like mm-hmm. the stuff that, you know, you know, they're going to get together, all that stuff, yeah. you know, it, it, it works. This movie is just not, it's not going to throw you really any big surprises. No. And, and I think that is going to be, you know, a feature, not a bug for, right. um, for the people that, that they kind of seek seek this out so uh yeah i will say yeah yeah, without spoiling anything i will say that the way that the movie resolves itself like in the like kind of kind of like you said i think you said it about this um there's not very high stakes in it like it's i mean the stakes are the historical context of, of which we know like this isn't 
for all mankind, the show on Apple TV Plus. Like we know what's going to happen. Uh, which, by the way, your letterbox you re- refer to it as for all mom kind. I think. Um, yes. Which I, I I dug that. I enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> but the way that the uh, the drama resolves itself in the finale of the movie and the climax of the movie just tickled me in the best way because. <laughs> It's it becomes a farce. It becomes a silly thing. And it it just really like, I don't know, it tied it together for me in a really satisfactory way. Um, it kind of drove me crazy, but I was just, because it was sure. so it was so stupid. Yes. It, it, not in terms of like <laughs> it, that. It's such like a it basically just like a toss off. Yes. I'm just like. That's pretty much how I felt about the movie in terms of how it treated its obstacles sure. that like, that's probably perfect oh, for yeah. it to, you know, yeah. to handle it that way. But it's just so, yeah, it's goofy. Anyway, we yeah. don't need to get into spoilers no, about no. the specific thing. There's yeah. something that Woody Harrelson does that's especially like, oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, goofy. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, again, yeah. like. I, this is one of those ones that was probably a tweener in terms of like sure. whether it was going to be right, right to streaming or not. And mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I think they wanted to bet a little harder on this and yeah. it'll be interesting to see where Apple goes, you yeah. know, be, it'd be this whole thing in terms of like, this like peekaboo, it'll be on mm-hmm. our service at some point, but we're not going to tell you when. Yeah. And like, you know, I think like Argyle, Napoleon and this, I don't think any of them. That's right have been really great successes in terms of if that's no. the idea yeah. that, you know, they're going to do something in theaters and then you'll get some sort of back end with the streaming. I think uh, yeah. this is one that probably could have gone right to streaming and I don't, um, who knows? It might I, have been a better bet. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Or at least like release it a little later in the year um, when it, because like it does have that sheen of like almost being like awards fodder but not quite so like i don't know it could it could have fit in pretty well there i think next apple tv plus i th- do they have wolves is that the next one they have coming out with brad pitt and yes, George Clooney? i believe okay. yeah because i saw the trailer i've been seeing the trailer for that and i'm almost positive Same. that one is yeah uh apple tv you know two big stars you know yeah. that one will probably do better mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know why people go to movies anymore i, yeah, I, I yeah. can i can never figure that stuff out anymore but yeah um with and, this one, I think they were maybe banking on like, um, you know, an anniversary year. It's what the fifty fifth anniversary of the the moon landing in mm-hmm. July, and maybe kind of getting the sort of the the patriotism. This movie definitely has some patriotic notes to it. So I don't know. I think maybe they they thought that certain demographics mm-hmm. maybe skewing towards uh, maybe maybe of the boomer variety uh, would show up for this. It doesn't sound like they did, but like I, I'm like I think like I'm gonna. Send a text to every mom that I know. Sure, uh, you know <laughs> everyone's moms. Uh, yes. I don't mean that in a suggestive or a bad way. Just, sure, you know, just like when this comes out on Apple TV, because mm-hmm. I'm like, you'll have a good time. Like yeah. it is, oh, yeah. it, it it goes down like a glass of lemonade tang. on the yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a glass of tang. Glass of tang. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, it's it's perfectly serviceable. It's fun. Uh, it's it's that glossy thing, and the history is. It just it, it it's like the greatest thing humanity's done. Um, so yeah, aside from space podcasts, nut, I mean, um, you'll have already yeah. seen Apollo Eleven. You'll have already seen First Man. Right. So this is the like that thing you do version of <laughs> yes. those events. You know. Yes. Yes. Uh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm literally just thinking of my, uh, movies. My mom, like, this is the wedding yeah, singer of right. uh, space travel movies. So. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff good stuff so i think that that's our review of fly me to the moon any parting thoughts about this movie brent i don't think so okay. i'm glad we landed on the moon i hope we me too again. yeah Fine. yeah it would be it would be nice if we did it again like yeah i don't know give give us something like a legacy cool. sequel to the moon landing yes yes that's <laughs> right on the money yep <laughs> um and and i will uh i don't know i don't know how to connect it back to that joke i don't know i was gonna say i'm like i'll be there in a a white shirt and a cowboy hat in the rain um, <laughs> that would be that's yes. how you do it up yes yeah <laughs> tight, tight white t-shirt Jesus. in the rain <laughs> yeah. no. 
<laughs> wrangle a moon for you. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's. Uh, we we can forego potpourri um, unless you have anything you want to bring up. Um, nope. I don't think so, man. I don't okay. even want to know what's going to happen next weekend or <laughs> yep. next week. Or this Same month. <laughs> here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It'll so be yeah. funny looking back on this month. We'll be like, what were we, we were talking about twisters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> twisters. There was something about like they talked about Biden or something. Like what? Like anyone? Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. <laughs> Hey, man, anyway. we're doing what we need to to stay sane, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, that'll do it for this week's episode of The Obsessive Viewer. Uh, Brent, once again, thank you for joining me on this episode as our ambassador to Glenn Powell and Katie uh, O'Brien. Uh, her work, you're the official, the ambassador of uh, those two actors on the Obsessive Viewer podcast. Uh, I, I will be back whenever they're back. Exactly, exactly. Verbal commitment. Uh, and speaking of verbal commitments, can you give a verbal commitment once again to where people can find you? That, that fell apart. Where people can find you online. Yeah, uh, yeah. So awakeinthedark.com is the yeah best way to get all of my links on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, Letterbox. Nice. It's always a different order. Every oh, time yeah. I do it, it's a different order. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but I have kind of different usernames scattered across a lot of social mm. media. So yep. it's usually the best way to best way to find them yep and links to all that is in the show are in the show notes of this episode next up you you're going to be reviewing deadpool and wolverine on awake in the and what mm -hmm. what else is coming up that you're going to be reviewing um probably sing sing if we get it mm. i think we will in nice. early august i missed the early acts unfortunately but, so did i um i think we'll be getting that in august and then probably cuckoo after that and nice. then i think romulus is next month or something so cool yeah. cool all right well check out awakenthedark.com brent thank you once again for joining me uh that's it for this week's episode of the obsessive viewer as always uh thank you so much for listening and make sure to follow the show on social media and subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast app also check out obsessive viewer podcasts uh other shows tower junkies a stephen king podcast <laughs> hosted by tiny and myself and anthology the twilight zone and classic sci-fi podcast hosted by me uh next week on the show i'm going to be reviewing Deadpool and Wolverine for a featured review and secondary review is up in the air. Not sure what we're going to review there, but uh, next week is Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, despite my lack of interest in it, really. Um, so until then, thank you so much for listening. And Brent, thank you once again. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for having me. And now, enjoy this short clip from a recent Patreon-exclusive episode. For the full episode and more Patreon-exclusive content, sign up at patreon.com slash obsessive viewer. It's that kind of stalkerish behavior. Um, there is, I didn't read the full article or anything, but I saw that Stephen King had uh, reviewed it or, or wrote something about it in some outlet somewhere. Um, but the kind of clear... Um, uh, uh, clear kind of connection to make is that it's similar sort of to misery and because it's similar to misery um stephen king had obviously a unique perspective on it um and what i find so interesting is that it is it is similar to misery in that it is about a woman who is obsessed with a man um and thank you for listening to the obsessive viewer podcast this episode was produced and edited by me, Matt Hurt. If you have feedback, thoughts on our episodes, or just want to connect, you can email me at matt at obsessiveviewer.com. For more information on this show, including a full archive of our episodes and show notes, visit obsessiveviewer.com. And if you enjoyed the show, please give us a follow on social media and subscribe to us on your podcast app of choice so you never miss an episode. Also, consider rating and reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible to help increase our visibility and grow our community. If you want to support the show and get early access to new episodes, as well as a steady stream of exclusive episodes, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. For information on more podcasts presented by obsessiveviewer.com, visit obsessiveviewer.com slash podcasts. Our theme song is A Little Mad Sometimes by As Good As It Gets. For more of their music, check them out on Spotify and at asgoodasitgetsmusic.com. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. Sit. 
See this episode's show notes for our unique promo code to get up to two months of free podcasting service with Libsyn when you sign up for a new account. Get your show on Apple and Spotify. Get helpful stats and all the support you need to sound your very best.